learn this video and I have a couple of thoughts. Um, so we just um, had a meeting across ECOWAS, uh, ECOWAS leaders out there in Nigeria and Abuja and they met as regards the Nigerian situation. And um, there are many angles to look at it. Uh, uh, just a little background. Uh, Russia has a lot of interest on the African continent, like we know. Sudan, Burkina Faso, Guinea, and um, Mali. But they're also making big incursions. And any new coup that has happened recently on the African continent has always been about Russia supporting the coup plotters, just like they did in the case of Asimi Goita in Mali and Tombaba in Guinea. And some of these African countries say, okay, they're, they're not happy about France and all of that. And since 2012, after the Libyan crisis, we had a big problem right here on this corridor because obviously we've had this right of jihadist fighters. And um, in fact, that was what caused the first crisis in Mali when I think Tomadi Touré was still there in Mali and <clears throat> the jihadist situation. But France, with Francois Hollande then, about 2012, came in with the uh, Rafael fighters and um, they set up something called Operation Bakan, but France has still left, has since left. And now we're having another situation. Uh, we all know why Niger is a hotspot, and I'll tell you why. Niger has got uranium. Every developed country out there wants uranium. France has got interest, obviously. Russia has got interest. The Americans have got interest. Uh, President Bazoum of Niger have been a very strong ally to the Americans as regards fighting against insurgents. America have their drone base in Niger, so they've got some military installation in Niger. And because of that, the case is quite fluid. So what has happened is the Americans have reached out to us, they reached out to President Tinubu, and um, obviously President Tinubu is the head of the ECOWAS Authority, and they have set up meetings. And that was the meeting they had today. And um, part of the recommendation is sanctions, no fly zone. Yeah, I'm a little bit iffy about that. I mean, so is it the Americans that are going to affect uh, the, the no fly zone? Uh, because do we have that kind of air power? And uh, when you take a, a real look at the air power we have, we got a couple of Chandus, uh, GF Tondas, Pakistani MiG jets. I'm not sure we have Sukhois again, but we got a couple of Chandus, then we have some drones. Uh, we gonna be keeping our place. Then we have Super Tucanos that we did buy. So is that enough air power? We're gonna be keeping our planes in the air to be able to ensure uh, the no-fly zone over Niger in a situation where the Russians and Wagner, for instance, have commended sort of the coup plotters. And the coup plotters in Niger, uh, Tian, uh, led by Tian, has already started to say things like, oh, Ecoa should not come attacking them and all of that. So what is going to play out? Yeah, I understand economic sanctions. Uh, but the question is, how well does the sanctions work? Uh, the support, because I know the coup plotters obviously have some Western powers behind them, probably. So, and even with the sanctions, it might have to be the people of Niger, the Nigerians, uh, that will suffer. And obviously, even with the sanctions, the borders are quite very porous, I mean. Uh, we're bordered with Niger and a couple of other countries. Uh, I'm not sure they can effectively police our borders with Niger, so food and supplies will still move in one way or the other. Uh, also, another option will be boots on the ground, which uh, 
it's an option I don't like uh, because it's always very iffy. And there's going to be a lot of collateral damage. And today, Nigeria has a lot of security challenges on its hands. I, I do not think that we are in that better stead to be able to you know, put boots on the ground in another nation when we have what we have on ground. So there's been divergent arguments. Sanctions probably not work, probably boots on the ground, but do we want to get into all that? I don't think it's right for President Tinubu to uh, start commanding over some level of external aggression. I think he, he needs to face and fix a lot of problems internally. Inflation at an all-time high, all the problems in Nigeria. The Nigerian economy is reeling from a lot of pain itself. It's not going to be in our best interests. Uh, the other idea is to set up something like an economic force where other countries donate. But my fear about that is pretty much it's still going to be the Nigerian war because hey, Nigeria is one of the largest donors to ECOWAS. And truth has to be told, there's also going to be an escalation with the Russians being pretty much around. And there's a fight for hey, uranium out there. So it's still Nigeria that's going to bear the brunt of that one. And does Nigeria have money to be able to funnel through an operation like that, I doubt. So, I mean, I've just been thinking about the situation and I've just been trying to explore every option necessary and I've just been thinking hard about it. And um, this is what I've been thinking all through this afternoon and this is what has been enveloping my thoughts, you know. But for what it's worth, I mean, I trust President Tinubu to be able to think carefully through this before we make decisions, you know, and weigh the pros and the, uh, the pros and the cons, you know, because yeah, America is pushing. Could we probably set up a base or passageway, you know, to for the Americans if they want to get in there, or should we use the sanction method and press them even further? you know, and see if the coup plotters will bulge, but they have the support of the people. And also, you know, what's the intelligence on ground in Nieme as we speak currently? And um, what's the reaction? I think calm has pretty much been restored. Uh, I have not really seen you know, reports from like on the ground situation as regards what's happening in Niamey, you know, as we speak. So, I mean, there's, there's just been a lot to think about. And these are things that are going to dominate my thought process this week. Uh, but I mean, I trust President Tinubu to be circumspect and the Air Corps to be circumspect uh, when they make their decisions. It's, it's quite a very touchy one. And, you know, it just, it's just enveloped my mind. And I, I've just been thinking about it. So I said I should share a couple of things, you know, you know, running up in my head, you know, this afternoon. All right. In as much as we are not happy with the situation of Niger, where a democratically elected leader, um, Bazoum, was hosted by the military dictatorship, we should be very careful as Nigeria or other with African countries in how we approach this situation. I want us to look at the realities of what happened that led to the coup. Number one, we have two United States military bases in Niger, one in Agadez, which is base 201, and one in Niamey, which is base 101. And we also have 6,000 strong force operation, Barken forces of French, 
in the same Niger, when they were sacked away from Mali and Burkina Faso and Guinea Conakry, they all packed themselves in Niger. Yet, of all their presence and the military might, they simply let the coup took place. They allowed it to happen because Mohamed Bazoum, the hosted leader of Niger, was the most pro-Western Niger leader of these days. Yet, they did not stop military coup against him. They removed him. They allow him to be removed. So if this is the case, our ECOWAS leadership, especially under the president of our country, should not make a mistake of making any effort in military intervention in Niger, as have they have been forced or pushed by the Western powers. I saw Kamala Harris calling our president, telling him that she is good and they should take action. French President Emmanuel Macron and Anthony Blinken, all of them talking and flattering our West African leaders to take action. And what they meant is military action. And once there's a military engagement within West Africa, it plays perfectly into their game. Because it's going to be cheaper for them to get oil in our Nigeria, for instance, because we are going to be trading crude oil in exchange for weapons to continue to fight the war. In Niger, they are going to be trading in uranium to get weapons in order to continue to confront Nigeria. And the West will now be using this as a ground to test their weapons, to make us destroy ourselves, to sell more of the same weapons and extract our resources with our blood. Especially Northern Nigeria. The North is practically going to be a hot zone and a battleground. Despite the problems we are having with banditry, with terrorism, with Boko Haram, we are now also going to be converted into a battle zone for testing weapons, including biological weapons. We should not let that happen. We should make a diplomatic effort. As I made in my letter up earlier, pre the former president of Nigeria, Muhammad Buhari, and Ahiru Mangal were, were, are well respected in Niger. A high power delegation under their leadership should be made to go to Niger and find a solution diplomatically to this issue. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. This uh, issue, guys, is really, I've been looking into it. I'm trying to figure out why are they, why, why, why are we having puts up and down in Africa, you know? Uh, because Niger is close to Nigeria, it's Nigeria that is my main concern. On top of the fact that we're fighting for our mandate to be returned, this is the last thing we need, though. But hey, here we are. So, me, I don't want any kasala, I don't want any problems in Nigeria, you know, or its surroundings. Because these Western people, or more, I don't trust them, or these palm colored people now, opportunity that they look for. They don't they run low on money, resource, everything. The opportunity, oh, we will not fall for the bait. Let's not fall for the bait, oh. you know. I not trust any one of them. Any palm color person from wherever I come, whether and the west, whether and the east, I no trust them, oh. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm bringing some of the videos here. I'm going to be speaking mostly pigeon because I really don't want people to figure out as much as possible, try to keep it coded. We don't want Kassala. I beg. Niger near us. Mm. Mm. Let's take some more videos. See, Niger is a country famous for its uranium. When we talk about neo-colonialism, this is one of the best examples. The French are heavily dependent on nuclear energy, and one-third of French homes are powered by uranium that comes from Niger, the Eiffel Tower even. Meanwhile, in Niger, 80% of the population do not even have electricity. France needs Niger's uranium so much, and yet Niger is the second poorest country in the world. How is this possible? Because the French are robbing them blind, taking and giving pennies. French neo-colonialism. So do not be surprised when people in Niger are chanting à bas la France, down with France. <laughs> Well, in other news, so what is happening now is that, um, what's it called? The Niger president, he has suspended the export of uranium and gold to France as of today. Today is the 30th, well, my time. So 
it's probably the 31st of July, their end, right? They, they suspended the export of uranium and gold to France from the 30th of July, 2023, with immediate effect. Hey! Hey! hey. My people, I beg go. May we tread with caution. No, may we not go because or uh, uh, we want peace or uh, fufun any people. We can't go to kill our own. I beg go. I beg, I they beg go. I they beg our leaders because <laughs> hey, I know some agreed. Now be their, now be their, now they like pass. So far they make them billionaires. Iko, everybody shiny. Yeah, we they, we we they put keep eye on judiciary for our mandate, but we also have to. We have to follow this thing bumper to bumper. We're talking Niger here. Niger shares a border with us. I beg. We don't want problems. We're trying to abuse. I hope the judiciary is paying attention to all of this crap and they do the right thing. I call my ministers. You see, the, the, advantage, the advantage of democracy over coup d'etat is that in a coup d'etat you don't have the luxury to consult people and say if you do this this is what i'll do i, I will give you you understand mm -hmm. but in a democracy you have all the time to go around this country you have all the time to find out what are the problems in this country mm -hmm. you have all the time to find solutions to the problem before you come and tell ask the people of this country to say that i want to run the affairs of this country mm -hmm. am i talking in this sense here mm -hmm. so what i'm saying is that if you want to be a president in this country, don't come and say, I didn't know this or that. Mm. Don't come and be blaming the previous government. Mm. Because you have been in this country, you know the problems that he's creating, uh, the previous government has created, find solutions to them. Don't come and waste my ears to say, oh, you did that four or five years ago, therefore I'm also doing it. What is that? So they are just passing the buck. It, it blame, blame game. It doesn't make you a, a leader. Right. Now, now, so both of them, in other words, you're saying that the former president, the current president, they are not acting like leaders. Is that yes. what you're saying? All yes. Right. All right. Uh, good confirmation there. Now, let's stretch it briefly. In, in a minute and a half, I want us to quickly deal with this. The sub-region, coup after coup, turmoil upon turmoil. Mali, Guinea, Burkina Faso is going on and on. Why are we seeing this? And uh, mind you, in ECOWAS, the, the chair is our own president. You see, again... When, I, when you look at issues, you don't go to the root cause. Mm. Why are we having coups? Mm. In the six days, we're having a lot of coups. Mm -hmm. um, look, do a research. You are a research officer. Do a research and find out why are we, why, what, is the what are the causes of coup d'etat? What are the causes? If you are running your country very well and the people are happy, who will stage a coup against you? Thank mm. you. I mean, so let us not say that they are wrong. Let, let us don't start, don't start condemning. What is happening? What, what, what are the root causes? Are the so, people... so, Captain, very quickly, um, Conde yes. in, in Guinea yes. is 83, yes. thereabouts. Yes. He's pushed a third term that was not supposed to happen yes. constitutionally. Yes. He pushed and Should a he third do that? term. I'm just laying bare the issues for you. When he was ousted, people hit the streets of Conakry celebrating. Over to you. So, you see, you've just confirmed what I, what I was saying. If you are doing the right thing, mm. the people will not rise up against you. Yes, but you see, coup d'etat, eh? I will say this, you may disagree with me. Coup d'etat is far, far better than people's revolution. I'm yes, telling you, yes. I'm, I'm saying it, I'm saying- Like Arab Spring? I, Right. What is happening? Look at what is happening there. They have never been able to stabilize. Mm. A coup d'etat is like somebody who's having an appendix. You take him to the hospital, bah, you cut the thing, he feels a pain a little bit, and it, it, the person is okay. Mm. Look, at, they have never been stabilized. But Ghana, we have stabilized. How many coups have we not had in this country? Mm. But we are completely stabilized. Mm. Do you understand? Do the right thing. Uh, there will be no coup d'etat. If you don't, do, uh, say, uh I have videos for you people today oh, because almost myself I they try to figure out what they happen. 
Hmm. Let me see. All right. At the Russian Africa summit, a clash of generation erupted. It has started. The veteran president Makisal of Senegal faced his younger brother, the courageous Capitaine Ibrahim Traoré of Burkina Faso. Of course, the land of upright men. This news is spreading across French-speaking Africa like bushfire. Now, this is what President Makisal responded to the captain, and I quote, In reality, I don't believe in help. And to respond to, uh, to our younger brother, Captain Traoré, the president of the FASO, the heads of state did not come here to beg, meaning Russia, just like we do not go other places to beg, end quote. Like, really, Mr. President? Let's rewind to June 2022. Mr. Makisal next to the Russian president, and he said, and then I quote, we no longer have access to wheat from Russia, but above all, to fertilizers, while our agriculture is already in, in deficit. That creates a serious threat to food security on the continent, end quote. I mean, how is that the Russian president problem if we can't even take care of ourselves, mm. especially considering this continent ha has over 60% of untapped arable land. Anyways, let's leave that. But what did the Captain Traore say to trigger his eldest brother? Let's dive into it. And I quote, I'm going to apologize to my elders who might be offended by the remarks to come. The question that my generation are asking are the following. We do not understand how Africa, with so much wealth in, you know, on our soil, with a generous nature, water, and the sun in abundance, Africa is today the poorest continent. And how is it that our heads of state are going across the globe begging? Mm. These are some of the questions we ask ourselves and we don't have answers, end quotes. Listen, I don't know about you, but President Ibrahim Traoré spoke for me because those are the kind of questions I often ask myself on these platforms. However, the cherry on the cake is this. And then I quote, my generation also put me in charge to say, because of this poverty, they are forced to cross the ocean to try to reach Europe. They die in the ocean. But the next time they will not cross, they will come in front of our palaces to seek their daily pittance, end quote. And to that, I raise my glass. And it's kind of giving me Ufwet Boigny, Captain Thomas Sankara vibe. Anyways, you already know the formula. It's either champagne for a few or drinking water for all. But one thing for sure, all the dinosaurs, misleaders, weak leadership, and the yes man shall no longer prosper on this continent. Wait, Nini? Mm. Mm. Hey, okay now. But the, what I notice across board is that people are excited about it. People are happy generally. The feeling that people are very excited. Hey. It is always very sad when a military takes over in a country. And it is even more sad to see people jubilating because any coup in any country is an organized crime perpetrated by a few criminals in uniform. The job of the military is to protect the government, not to run the government. But I do not blame people and blame criminals in uniform anytime they take over power because the anti-corruption police in each of these countries have not done their job right. They have been compromised. They have forgotten that they were not working for the president of that country, but for the country. Just like the EFCC, since 1999 that we have had politicians, how many politicians have been sent to jail? How many politicians' family have been sent to jail since 1999? We know what they were worth when they came into power. We know what they are worth right now. If Ibori can escape EFCC in Nigeria, and eventually get caught in London. It's a big question mark on the credibility of the EFCC. And I am calling the EFCC to start doing its job. If you do not want military to come to power, we worked so hard to get this democracy. It will be so unfortunate 
if due to the lack of uh, 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 working rights by the anti-corruption agencies, if they refuse to do their job and bring all these people back into power, we don't want that. So we are asking the EFCC to start doing their job and all the anti-corruption police to do their job and make Nigeria a better place, a greater place to be, to live, and to invest. Corruption is a crime against humanity. And the more we continue to let it go unchecked, Russia and the Wagner group will continue to destabilize Africa. We want freedom. We fought for freedom. And we must make sure that we protect our freedom by making sure that the anti-corruption agencies carry out their job accordingly. We pray not to have a military coup in Nigeria, but we want people to know that you do not have impunity. You have no impunity in corruption. Like the other one said, if you commit any crime, you join our party, you are free. No, that man should have been arrested even for making that offer, for, for making that statement. Nobody has impunity to commit criminality in our country. God bless you. Hey. There's more video. There's more. France embassy in Niger has been set ablaze. You heard what I said? The French embassy in Niger has been burned down to ashes. As you can see in these pictures, these are citizens of Niger. They took their screen to a protest and they went to the French embassy in Niamey and burned it down to ashes. Because the French president Emmanuel Macron has issued a threat that if they don't release their Western puppet Mohamed Bazoum, they are going to send the French military to inflict pain on the people of Niger. So therefore, the citizens of Niger took their screen and they went to the French embassy in Niamey and set it ablaze guys what are your thoughts just yesterday the french president emmanuel macron called the nigerian idiotic president ashiwaju <laughs> bola ahmed Tinubu, telling him oh. to send military people to niger republic in order to remove the military coup leader the military coup leader of niger said the french people will no longer have a say in their country so currently as we speak Niger is upside down. As you can see, the Niger citizens are raising the flag of Russia. They say they don't want the United States and the West in their country anymore. They want the Russian. Guys, drop a comment respectfully. You don't they have <laughs> There's more video. Who can I wait? We can show now this thing. Vitro Blendeno. Hey. Vitro Blendeno. Hey, Vitro. They're chanting the French MS in the former African colony. Can you imagine? Of Niger is under attack. The crowd shouts down with Macron, says shouts down with Macron, long live Putin, long live, hey God. Ayati, <laughs> Ah. Mm. Mm. I don't know about I don't know I don't trust Russia I don't trust any Western I don't trust anyone I I mean I did like exchanging one uh, 
colonialist with another that's that's my concern is that what is going on africa is awake and we will sleep no more so today protesters in niger attack france embassy it all started when france threatened um to attack the military leaders if they don't install back their puppet government so this provoked a lot of people in niger and they attacked france embassy and the protesters said we don't want france again and they are calling on russia to come in immediately and protect them so france is still having imperial mindset colonial mindset arrogance look at the distance between niger and france but france is trying to dictate to them how they should live their lives Niger will kick out France just like Burkina Faso did, just like Mali did, just like Chad did, just like Guinea Conakry recently did. We don't need France in Africa here. After colonizing us for over 500 years, you've done nothing for us but to loot, to destroy our continent and steal our resource. That is the only thing France and the West has done in Africa here. We will kick all of you out in Africa one by one. Dear Western puppets in Africa, be warned. Oh, mm. my own concern is I, I hope they are not trading one. Do you understand? One puppet with another one. That's my own. No, mm. all these uh, fufu nene people, white palm color people. Me, I don't trust one of any one of them. None. You understand it's easy for them to they go start quarrel between brother and sister when the team reach ground when the castle reach ground they no go dead jail they go use two people head jam once they see they don't they, they don't they fight each other they fight each other they go leave una for them gonna continue to defy each other because it's part of our agenda oh mm. so they play the video they go Americans are running away from La Guinea. As you can see in these pictures, these are fresh pictures of American citizens escaping from La Guinea with immediate effect. On Monday, July 17, 2023, the military coup leader of La Guinea, Mamadou Dumbuya, issued a statement that said that all Americans should leave their country within seven days. According to the military coup leader, Mamadou Dumbuya, he said Americans that are in the country are manipulating our system and forcing the LGBTQ rights in the faces of traditional people. According to the Laginian leader, Mamadou Dumbuya, he said LGBTQ is not a practice of the people of Guinea and will never be a practice. So right now, as we speak, if you, are, if you are an American and you have an American passport, you are no longer allowed to travel to Guinea. So the people that are currently in Guinea, the American citizens that are currently in Guinea, they were asked to leave the country within seven days or face massive and conducive prosecution. Guys, drop a comment respectfully. Hey, so you don't reach like that. Too. They don't they kick people out too, of their country. <laughs> <laughs> hey. my people what do you guys think oh, of this whole thing i beg let's talk let's talk please you people should come and educate me more those who know more about this thing because i only recently started following it you know um abemona used the link because i don't understand though this whole thing is a bit is, is on top of the fact that we are keeping our eyes on the judiciary and all of that you know we can't we can't afford any type of crisis right now to be honest we can't we can't afford it too we are keeping our eyes ready we are watching the judiciary you know trying to pay attention to what their next steps will be i don't even know what the delay is i don't know why it's taking them so long to to, to provide there to give their judgment on this tribunal issue so that we know the direction we are going because everywhere is not looking good right now the only sane thing that can happen i believe to west africa right now is let them just swear in peter Ovi because he's the only one with the wisdom and the acumen to be able to douse this mess that's going on you know he's the only one 
I don't know any other person. He's the only one. All those other leaders, they are greedy. Some of them have been there for, what, 30, 40 years? They are so disconnected from the people. They are puppets. They only do the bidding of their palm-colored people. It's what they tell them to do that they do. And they don't mind buying their people just to remain in power. You know? How can you have resources? You that, you that have the resources, you don't get to enjoy it. All the uranium, all the uranium, they take it from Niger and take it to France. They they use it for their electric bulbs or whatever it is that they're using it for. Meanwhile, Niger, Niger does not have any electricity. They're suffering. These people have not done well at all. This is why it's good to do people well. Eh? It's good to treat people well. Now, everything that they've done is not catching up with them. People are now disassociating and saying, you know what, we don't want to have a party. We see people celebrating on the streets. People are celebrating on the streets. Hmm. Oh my God. They are dancing, having parties. Let me show you guys a video. People are celebrating. Serious celebration, no serious bedu. Hey, I've never seen this kind of thing before. My memory of um my memory of military takeover is not a pleasant one, no. So this one that I'm seeing people excited and happy, I'm, I'm surprised. It really, they surprised me, I know, lie, you. See, look. Now they see them. Now they see them. People are excited. They are excited that, hey, God. Hey. Eh? People are excited. They are happy. They are dancing in the streets. There's jubilation. Like, yes. Eh? My memory of, um, um, of, of, uh, of military rule is not is not a pleasant one so i don't understand the excitement you know i don't i understand that because if people have been suffering so they're tired even in my obwenge listeners mm -hmm. happy sunday how on a day <clears throat> my obwenge people anywhere where small picking they cry the point hand small picking they cry the point hand if in mama no day dear in Papa go day there. Hmm. Hmm. Make we come out monkey hand from Supo before monkey hand go turn to human being hand. I don't say this night, if I say make we take votes, people will like military rule and people will like civilian government inside our Obodo, Nigeria. Everybody go prefer civilian government. But if you enter Niger Republic today, hmm, in a different ball game, oh, Niger people they talk say they prefer military rule past civilian government. Even say Naku will happen inside there, then still prefer military government for Niger today. But now waiting kosam. Now something will kosam. Now something will make somebody wake up, talk say he prefer military rule pass democratic government na something kosam na something make kokoyam kokoyam concern na something they kosam even for our obodo nigeria when i see how things they go when i see how they just turn twist everything after we don't go vote when i see the condition of the country na something they cause q now something they cost you inside country. Now something they cost them. When I know say the day where they make Tinumbu the Shiamo of Ecowas, him hold hand for ear. Con the talk say there should be nothing like cube inside West African country. When I remember, ba? 
him come forget say now something they cost something. Make on a first of all this thing to him. We will not allow coup after coup. It's Africa so We will take this up seriously with African Union. And it's why are you not investing in tax liens? No, seriously. Why are you not investing into one of the most incredible? So the European Union and Britain and America. That was President Tinumbu. When I hear waiting him talk, we will not allow Cube inside West African sub-region. But waiting will happen on the 25th of February and on the 18th of March this year. Waiting on a go column. I won't make the answer me. <laughs> our Oga Presidu. Waiting on a fit or how on a won't define waiting will happen on the 25th of February and on the 18th of March. Which kind of thing on a won't carry define that will happen? That one no be political cue. That thing will happen that day. We're waiting on a few column. Now cube now. When Nigerians don't come vote, vote person where they like. We can on a con they give us something else where on a, where, where we don't know. I neck can they give us something else where we don't know. See our president where they say they no one cue. They don't even start them. Na them be the shiamu. Na them be the people we carry them for head in, with eye neck. Then they talk say they no want Q and they don't do Q inside Obodo Nigeria because no be waiting we order for. Now they think we then give us. No be waiting we order for. No be waiting we negotiate. We they see today. So waiting will happen on the 25th of February and on the 18th. That one now political queue, then they call him Oga Presido. Nigerians are not happy. Before you come out, big stone where they another person eyes. First of all, come out the one. Come out the, the mountain where they your eyes. Before you come out, stone where they for another person eyes. Yes, our Presido don't they shout say, we no want cube inside Africa, inside West Africa. But waiting will happen on the 25th August. How you fit define that thing will happen on the 25th August? Waiting you fit column after we don't go vote, after we don't go give our mandate to somebody where we like, we come the year another Dogon Turenji, another Magana. Waiting will happen for Nigeria on the 25th and on the 18th. Now, political queue, then they call that one. Just look at. After we don't go vote, just hear this guy. See how then they count our vote. LUP! 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 My Obwenge people, wanna see? Now our vote, then they can't so, but at the end, they can't give us another result. Make them not allow waiting will happen inside Niger. So the citizens can they support military. Just listen to this. Watch this. My people, this one, a wahala, where they happen for Niger Republic. Just could and watch the video. Hey, 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 my people. One that shall never end. The people of Niger Republic who see the kind of support we then give the man we plot to come on the president to see a stadium full, see military support and backing. Hmm? See, this one are real people's mandate to this one are real people's mandates. This one a pure example when the president with the country not they do well. 
when the politician has not they do well, so when this kind could can happen, they go come out them. People go they support them. They don't get any other choice. When so far out too much for the land, now all this kind thing you will see. Hmm? See as this man single-handedly plan could come out a whole president for chair, keep on one side, announce himself as the president of the country. Hmm. Nije, one adult set to one leg, one standard. This one, I call you know, my Ninja people, president, governors, make one they do where. We don't want to see this kind of thing for Ninja, or make one they treat the people where we are they rule where. So that when this kind of thing won't happen, the people will go stand for one. Now, if this thing won't happen for Nigeria now, who go fit come out, say, at the back, the politicians? Nobody. But nobody this kind of thing wants it for this country. This one a real strong calling to all the politicians within Nigeria. Niji don't set the standard. I just pray, say this one, make it not happen for Budo Nigeria. Because if it happen, hmm, big Yawa, big Kasala, na ingo boss. Hmm. Make you enjoy the video, share. Make you follow me, see what I see. I thank you. Hmm. This is the kind of support that the people of Niger Republic is giving to the coup plotter. They are so in love with him. See, the, the stadium is full. This man actually plotted a coup and removed the president of Niger Republic. But see the kind of rousing welcome that he's getting. This is so unbelievable. He has all the backings of the military and the people. This is what we, we are talking about mandates. When the government is not giving, the democratic government is not doing the needful. When the coup plotters plot at the takeover, this is the kind of support they will get. And this is a call to the Nigerian government. Treat the people right. Treat them right. We pray this doesn't happen in Nigeria. Because if this happens, it's going to be a very, very, very bad omen to the country. Well, enjoy this video. Thank you very much. So, <laughs> oh, mm. let me show you guys another one. Mm. These people are ready. Oh. These people are ready. As in, they're not even. So, the U.S. threatens to withhold aid to Niger due to the military takeover. Niger military says they should keep their aid and give it to their millions of homeless people in the U.S. Charity begins at home. My God. I just read somewhere also that they're saying, um, they were talking about... Um, uh, so they are they, they you know threats threats of sanctions right they said we don't we want we want more sanctions actually they're actually begging them to give them sanctions and uh, says we want more sa sanctions from you to force us to be self-dependent oh god this is what they call when you lose face no bargaining chip you cannot use the same ah god this generation eh yeah. Woo -hoo. Kudos to all of now. Yeah, all of us of this generation. I'm more with the city, so things are happening now. I'm telling you, they are putting on their threats with sanctions. They're saying, bring it on. We want more. Matter of fact, it's not enough. Can you give us more? My own big concern is if the judiciary, the judiciary should be paying attention to what's happening right now. They don't have any excuse. Judiciary, with everything where they happen, if they get sense, they need to do the right thing. This is the only solution to everything where they, where they ground right now. This is the only solution. There's no way out again. This is everywhere, don't block. Every year. Now, Boo Boo, where will Boo Boo go? Boo Boo said that if they trouble him too much in Daura, he will go to he will go to Niger. Now, Niger don't block him. He can't go to Niger because his friend is no longer there. Now, 
friends say me they release the man. Instead of they, they go, they go put touch light in France embassy. To tell you say these people ready. My own be say, my own concern be say, I hope they are not trading one for the other. So when they flag these other people flag, me not trust any one of them. You know, I don't trust any one of them. And this one, when um, all these people, all these leaders on the call, uh, um, Abado, they say, okay, they talk to all the West African leaders. May they tread with caution, though. Whether you like it or not, those people are your, they are your brothers and your sisters. Stranger, nothing from outside. I can't tell you, see me, you can't fight your brother and sister because what did they do? You know, you know, you know, suit them. You know, benefit them. You know, go feel go put your hand for fire because say another person for outside the tell you, see me, you go follow your brother quarry. Nigerian government, the ones that are that are temporary right now, tread with caution. We not send you a message, oh. Mon, I not send. How many soldiers we get now? Do we even have that many? One I don't send to go by. For Boko Haram, we get, eh? <laughs> I beg, go on and not send people, children to go or necessary go fight or necessary fight when they not when they not send do now because when are they greedy, eh? I beg, go because <laughs> we cannot continue like this. We can't. We can't do this. My own, I just hope that the judiciary is paying attention and they do what is needed. That's my own concern. Because all of this that we're talking about right now, it will not be happening if, okay, imagine now, they're not even listening to, they're not even listening to Agbado. Agbado talk just for the time and say, I bet may, may keep quiet, you know, legitimate now. It's an illegitimate, which matter you want to talk? They they shut them up. This is what happens when when we say you, you have the position, you're in the position to do the right thing, you refuse to do it. You don't lose face, you don't lose respect all around. You have lost respect. ECOWAS and African Union, I don't know, they all be like puppets. It's when they go fight for their people, they don't fight for their people. Now, another thing they go, they do, they are like puppets right now. Nobody takes them seriously. They're not taking them because they have illegitimate. Most of the presidents, they are illegitimate. They refuse to go. They refuse to allow the ones that know how to do the work to come in because they want to see their 40 years. That's what they rule for 40 years. Hello, Jay. What till they find? And what is happening right now is that they're not even, even if you go on, a, like I'm trying to share some videos here, I'm not able to. They are preventing it from spreading. They don't want people to really know what's going on. That's another thing. So you can't find most of these videos. You can't find it on on social media. They're blocking it. They're blocking it from coming through. Instead, they inundate you with information about uh, uh, aliens and stuff like that. Okay, so the information is not readily out there. I've been trying to share some videos. I can't even share. There's so many. I I can't even share. The part one of Adamu Garba is not my favorite person, by the way. I played that video from him because it made sense in that conversation he was talking. He was actually making sense. Maybe I can play the part two so you guys can listen because I think he made sense, even though I don't agree with his politics. I know he voted for... Oh, shoot. Um, oh, my God. Let me see. I think I can find it. Um, Okay. All right. So I'm going to play so yeah, as you guys can listen. Not happy with the situation. The the Russia Africa Can you guys hear? Let me know if you can hear. And um, I think this is the what I'm saying. And that uh, it has clearly outlined the infrastructure development roadmap that. Um, Let me see. 
sit up now. We we'll discussed on Wednesday the interview issue, and I asked at the end of the call, though. No, I mean, this is and, not it. Um, this um, is not it. With the introduction of structure, okay. in as much as we are not happy with the situation of Malaysia, where a democrat. Further to my earlier video, I want to emphasize that from Joe's strategic perspective, it is important and in the interest of the Western powers that West Africa should have no peace. Because our peace is enlightening us and giving us more stability and is making us to recalibrate our partnerships, our foreign partnerships with countries that matter, that care about our development as opposed to the countries that exploit and steal and plunder our resources. Not that they are losing the war completely, it is in their interest that there is no peace. And we should understand that the global conflict taking place in Ukraine and Russia has drastically affected the energy demand in Western powers, and they are looking for energy powers. And what better countries to play in getting these energies than Niger, and particularly Nigeria? Nigeria have largest gas and oil reserve, while Niger have highest number of uranium deposits the seventh largest uranium deposit in the world. One third of French nuclear energy, you know, is powered by uranium extracted from Niger. In fact, even the Eiffel Tower in France is powered by uranium that is coming from Niger. Meanwhile, in Niger, 80% of the population of that country have no access to electricity. So there is a complete plunder. But now that the Nigerians are becoming more democratic and Nigerians are becoming more a demand of transparency and accountability is forcing them away from getting these resources as they used to get it. So therefore, it is in their interest that there should be war, so that we can use these same resources cheaply to them in exchange for weapons. We shouldn't play to the, to the hands of these people, please. In fact, another thing again we should understand is if West Africa decided to invade Niger in the name of trying to restore constitutional order, we are not going to be fighting Niger we are going to fight in, we are going to be fighting Wagner PMC that are present in Mali, in Burkina Faso, and in Guinea Conakry. Exactly. If the combined forces of Wagner came mm. to Niger with forces of West Africa confronting each other, trust me, we're going to destroy our entire region. Yeah. So nothing other than to satisfy the ego of the Western powers. We shouldn't be too cheap to play to this game. Because this game is going to destroy us completely, especially northern Nigeria. We should never allow that. That should not happen in our presence. These guys are playing us big time to plunder our resources at the expense of our blood and our sweat by creating enmity between the countries that we share so much affinity with. We shouldn't do that. The population of northern Nigeria and the population, 55% population of Niger, are almost equal uh, the, same, the same people. So we should not be able to allow these people to play us at the point of the borders they drew against us, please. Further to my earlier video, mm. I want to emphasize Let me see if I can. Yeah. I noticed that when African leaders um, under the leadership of our able president, uh, uh, and the team, um, just rounded up a meeting and have agreed to give the Nigerian military seven days ultimatum to restore the democratically elected leader of our nation. And in as much as we want to speak hard in the front of the media, it is in our interest that we should explore a critical diplomatic mission that will see to maintaining the peace and security within this region as against using any hard power between ourselves and our neighbors. It's going to be very destructive. As I mentioned again, I want to re-emphasize that in Nigeria, we have two... Nigerian population respects the former president, Muhammad Ibuhan, and also they respect a renowned businessman, Nahu Mangan. A high power delegation under the leadership of former President Mohamed Bouhadi can help Nigeria in trying to find a negotiated issue or peace settlement between the Ostate leader Mohamed Bazoum so that he can be released from the military detention and the military powers. And we should understand that most of the countries that are bordering Niger right now, Burkina Faso, Mali, and Guinea Conakry, 
are all under the same military dictatorship. Any effort to try to affect the sitting military government in Niger will be deemed confrontational directly against them. Are we ready to confront four nations at a time? Mm. Why do we even have to think about war in our borders? Exactly. We should not do that. Mm -mm. We've seen how Ukraine is practically destroyed simply because they play to the tune of the Western powers. All countries that play to the tune of the Western powers ended up getting destroyed. Saddam Hussein placed in their hand when he was fighting against the Kuwait. And at the end of the day, what happened? He got destroyed. You know, the same Saddam also fought against Iran. At the end of the day, he got destroyed. The same situation happened in different places in the world. And at the end of the day, they got destroyed. So we should not make the mistake of playing to the tune of these Western powers. They don't care about us. The only thing they need is to explore and exploit our resources to their own development. And they will do it much more easily and cheaply in the position of conflict and war. Because we will depend on them exclusively to win our wars in exchange for our resources. Come on, we have history of this in Nigeria. When during Biafra, they are getting our oil for free of charge while we kill millions and millions of our citizens together. We should not go back to that history. I noticed that West Africa. Mm. This is well said, though. I'm not going to even front. This he said he made sense, so we should not we should not even entertain it at all. It's not something we should entertain. You know, there are ways that these matters can be resolved. They should find ways to resolve this matter without getting anybody in the process being hurt. We don't need it. I, Africa never settled since these people touched the soil. So, so agitation, agitation, agitation. Mm -mm. We can't afford it. I beg. We cannot. Ha. You know? So. But my concern is, my biggest concern here is, I hope we are not, they are not trading one for another. That's just my own, you know? I hope they are not trading one for the other. That's just my problem. You know, replacing one with the other. And another question I have, why did all the African leaders have to go to Russia? That's my question. Why they not feel meet for somewhere in France? Oh, why? Now we get all the mineral resources. Why did they go? They carry themselves. Use state money, taxes. Take fly themselves to Russia. Why they not make neutral place for within that Africa where they feel meet? It's a question, no? Why? Eh? It don't make any sense for them to carry their sense. You want to get all the resources when they're well sought after. Uranium, now you. Gold, now you. Uh, diamond, now you. Oil, now you. Everything, when this West, they survive and thrive on, now you get them. You go carry your two left leg, enter transport with your people money, when no day. Go and your people they suffer, then they starve, then they're hungry. You carry the money, take go meet them for why. And I notice another thing why they say not be a come before arrow. Why, <coughs> why be Russia, Africa? Why not be Africa, Russia? Now, so it's supposed to be people know they pay attention to all these small, small things. I don't understand. I get it that you know, people are you know, um, everybody's you know, it doesn't matter. It matters, all those little things matter. It's all about the optics. Why is it not Africa, Russia? Why does it have to be Russia, Africa? Why? Arrow comes after, way after A. I'm really looking forward to the day that we will take our position in the world, to be honest, because this is ridiculous. I mean, hey, some people will say this is a start. And I have mixed feelings about this whole, you know, thing that's happening happening in the African continent. I, I'm, I'm, I have mixed feelings about it. You know, I'm unsettled about it because I'm not sure. My biggest concern is that all these regions that have been taken over right now, they're close to Nigeria, Mali, Niger, which other country, Guinea, Conakry, you know, all those countries, they are close to us. Eh? If Kasala Bosna and Asnoy, they'll just use leg, pass bamboo, that's it, they don't reach Nigeria with that. Eh? In, on top of that, one, now with a with a look judiciary, I make judiciary do the needful. On top of that one. Eh?
Let's see if I can. Let me see if I can play this video for you guys. Let me see if I can share it first of all. Make I said that we feel clear because we need to listen to these videos. I beg. Let me see if this one they go. Let me share. Otherwise, I go just play and I go just listen to her. Yeah, hey. It's not letting me. They're not they let me share them. They are not letting people share these videos. They don't want it to get out. So I'm just gonna play it. You guys just listen. So I'm just gonna let you know what the whole thing is about since we can't see it. So it's um shoot. Where is this thing? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. So let me play this one. This is a different one, Sha. It's not the same one. I don't know. I think for some reason it skips. Oh, shit. I don't skip that one again. Mm. I don't skip that one mm, Let me see. It's, it's just, it's annoying that you know it's annoying that you uh, at least africa should be in front eh? not behind let me see okay oh my gosh i've passed Hold on, all this. So, let's see. Oh, let me see. So, let me see. Okay. Okay. Let me play this. Some people are saying we're taking Africa from the West and giving it to the east you know uh, what we call a good relationship between africa and and the, and the east is when the east can stay in east africans has to stay in africa what brings us together with russia is for us to have our weapons we will use the nuclear weapons from Russia to cover up ourselves while this we are producing our own nuclear weapons. Independence in Africa is when we are able to defend and protect our land. When we are able to produce our own food, our own medication, use, utilize our resources to benefit our people. The resources that we have in Africa, we don't need investors. I don't want to see the Chinese coming here and having their companies or the Russians coming here having the companies. I want to see us Africans having our own companies. Those companies must belong to us. We want to do business with, with us. We will exchange in a form of exchange, in a form of butter trade on what we don't have here in Africa. Then somewhere, somehow we may exchange, but we have got everything in Africa. So we need to put up our own manufacturing industries and refine our plants of our own oil and build our own machinery, our own equipment, our, develop our own technology without the West or without the Russians. Why are we having the Russians today? We are seeing that the West are here and they've established their military bases to protect their interests. Now we have to fight them out of Africa and we borrow nuclear weapons from Russia. We cover up ourselves and produce our own nuclear weapons wow. because we've realized that without a defense of 50 million boats and our nuclear weapons we are useless mm. okay. we are defenseless we are powerless we have seen them doing it in libya mm. we couldn't intervene surprisingly i've heard to look the president of nigeria saying as echo was we are going to bite back those coups not this time my friends not this time as we have taken Niger, we are going to take Cameroon. Hmm. We are going to take Togo. Not this time. Don't ever try. Hmm. We are not going to submit ourselves to imperialism anymore. Wow. Not again. This has happened and continued because our leaders are compromised. 
How can Tinubu say we are going to fight the so-called coup leaders who are protecting the African resources, mm. who are kicking out the colonizer, who are removing the colonizer's language from being an official language in Africa? And an African leader says we are going to fight back on that for the liberation of Africa. You go again. Ha. Some people are saying, well, Oh, my people now they here. I don't say not bullying you. West. Let me see. Let me see here. And why do we have to continue with the coups to liberate the so called the Francophone, especially in the Sahel region? And also, this is going to spread throughout the continent of Africa. And after that, we're going to, uh, to, 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 to have the 50 million votes on our 50 million votes and our nuclear weapons. Because uh, if our people are not understanding why are we having coups, especially the academics, the so-called academics, groomed by the Roman Dutch law and groomed by the constitutions that were written, those constitutions that we have in Africa are not sacred. They were not written by us. They are constitutions that were written by the colonizer to favor him. Can you imagine France, almost 60% of her uranium is coming from Niger. And France is not happy. But the people in Niger are poor. But our resources are going out every day. The, the continuation of neocolonialism and the so-called smart colonization is happening right now in Africa. People are in dark somewhere in Africa and it's being said that we must adhere to global warming. People are kept in darkness. There is no electricity. But the coal from Africa is going overseas, being used overseas. What they are telling us not to do in Africa with coal is what they are doing with the fossil fuels in Europe. And they're telling us that we must adhere to the so-called global warming. And we, we have electric cars. We must not use our diesel. We must not use our copper. We must not use our uranium. We must not produce nuclear weapons. Why they don't want us to, 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 to produce nuclear weapons? To remain defenseless so that they can extract the resources from Africa to overseas every day. That is why they bring terrorists to destabilize Africa. Where there is terrorists in Africa, there is resources that are being extracted overseas. Terrorism that is happening in Mozambique is because of the resources that are there. And you see terrorism spreading out of the continent, throughout the continent. If we don't stop it now with the so-called coups, with the coup d'etat, if we don't stop with the coup d'etat, then Africa will go back to slavery. I once said, imagine if Russia is defeated by imperialism, then what is Africa? What is going to happen to Africa? Have you ever thought of it? Mm. People think we are homongers. We are retaining Africa back to the Africans. Our leaders are compromised. Those leaders that you see in office, they're compromised. They work, they welcome those companies to Africa. Uh, we, we want people to understand why are we having coups? Okay, so he basically uh, answered my like question, Niger sort of. So let me see, there's another the one. To liberate this. Uh, I thought I was not going to mention anything until the sun sets. But unfortunately, there are some people uh, who said that Mali has been independent for the past 63 years. Uh, you know, most of the Africans, they don't know what is independence. Mm. They think just, I'll give an example again in Zimbabwe. People think that Zimbabwe was independent in 1980. Zimbabwe became independent in 1998 when the land was given back to the people. In Mali, we became independent just now when Colonel Asim Goita took power. In Burkina Faso, we became independent uh, in 1987 when uh, Captain uh, Thomas Sankara became the president of Mali. But unfortunately, the West found a way and installed their own puppet, who is uh, 
Lace Kampore. He has been there for so many years. Have you ever heard the West saying that there is a dictator in, in, in Burkina Faso? Have you ever heard them? Only because Blaise Kampori was serving the interests of the West in Mali. Now, Burkina Faso is independent under the leadership of Captain Ibrahim Traore. Is Ghana independent? No, Ghana is not independent was independent during the time of uh, Kwame Nkrumah. Is the Democratic Republic of Congo independent? No, was independent during the time of Patrice Lumumba. Is Mozambique independent? No, was independent during the time of President Samora Machel. Can you tell me if South Africa is independent? If Nigeria is independent? <laughs> Can you tell me? Eritrea is independent. Zimbabwe is independent. Unfortunately, there is a compromisation in Zimbabwe, which is the so-called Minister of Finance, Muntuli Nuwe, who is saying that we have to, 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 to compensate the so-called white farmers. If we compensate the white farmers in Zimbabwe, we will be a colony again. Then we need another Mugabe to liberate Zimbabwe. Is Zambia independent? Is Namibia independent? Is Botswana independent? Can you tell me? Do you people understand what is independence? Do you know what is independence? I thought I was not going to mention anything until this. <laughs> My people, now they hear something. Sense. Unfortunately, I can't share the video like that. Um, yeah, we've arrived in Russia and we were allowed to maintain our firearms and our military uniform as we arrived in Russia from Burkina Faso. But imagine when he, Kamala Harris, the vice president of the United States of America, when she arrived in Africa, when she arrived at our uh, airport in Ghana, an airport that was built by the Chinese as well. They disarmed us and they searched us and they took over the airport. But our good friend in Russia, I remember we went there in our military uniform during the time of President Samora Machel. We went there in our military uniform during the time of President Thomas Sankara. And today again, we've done it. And they allowed us to maintain our firearms with Captain Ibrahim Traore. But fortunately, as we are there in Russia, there are some good news from home. I've spoken about the Western puppets that are in Africa. I've also told the Western puppets that your days are numbered. We're going to support the coups, the military coups. If you can see today, Mali is in good hands. The mm. Faso is in good hands. Guinea is in good hands under military leadership. If I'm not forget, Chad is in good hands with the young leaders in a military uniform. We are going to do those coups because these Western puppets are not going anywhere with the so-called votes. Only if we do the coups, how can an African leader be a friend of Russia and be a friend of the West at the same time? Why can't African leaders think for themselves and be man enough and have a spine and say no to the West, say no to the Americans? I've mentioned that uh, Bazoum, Mohamed Bazoum of Niger, I've said he's a puppet. And there's a coup there. There is a coup there in Niger. We are also sending this message now. We are sending this message to Gambia. Adama Baro. We are coming there. Akufo Ado, we are coming there. Tinubu, we are coming there in our military uniform. We have realized that these votes are only orchestrated and the so-called democracy orchestrated by the West to ensure that they keep their puppets in power in Africa and extract our resource, oppress our, our, our people with the so-called Western laws and their genetically modified food and the international laws being brought to Africa. Young Africans, let us support those coups. You will hear ECOWAS and African Union and SADC saying they are condemning a coup in Niger. But where have they been? 
when our leaders are becoming the puppets of the West and never want to liberate up. Yeah. Wow. Guys. Hey. <laughs> oh, yeah. When I hear, they say that they, they, they come for Agbado. Hey, they, they come for Ghana on two. Hey. Oh, now, wow. Man, this thing is serious, so. It's serious, man. We need to <laughs> judiciary, judiciary. Hey, 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 my goodness. Ha, man. You see, when you have the opportunity to do right by your people, if you don't do right, you don't know when payday will come. Look at it now, people are tired. People don't tire. Eh? People don't tire. Give these people their mandate. No, you thief them. Broad daylight. You thief them. You thief the thing. You carry and give another person. Everybody, they watch you. The whole world, they watch. Look at what's happening all over the West Africa now. Francophone countries especially. They're tired. They make the money in order for them to get access to their money. They have to, they have to, they have to call France to give them from their central bank with high interest rates. I don't forget that woman name, that professor, that uh, doctor, and that was the. I think she was the. She was also the. I think whether she was the African Union secretary. I can't remember though. You know. The woman kept saying it. I remember that because of that, she reached out to the advisor to resign. She was actually asked to resign because she was spitting a lot of truth. Spitting a lot of truth. Eh? They say Af African countries, the, the fans just put their leg for their neck, refused to release them. The woman talked, talked, talked. When they say the woman truth don't too much, they are they tell her she stepped down. you have the opportunity to treat your people where you have African leaders 40 years ago they there as puppets because they don't promise and say nothing will happen and it's true this man raised a valid question where are those have where is African Union and ECOWAS when these people self-impose themselves on the people when there's a clear look at the war election that happened in Nigeria now for instance why would you see that type of election and still offer to make this man your president. Isn't that, doesn't that already tell you that there's something wrong with the brains of these people? Look at Lai Mohammed, the likes of Lai Mohammed, for instance. After lying with the number of people that they were paid during answers, they rewarded him with a position in the World Trade, World Trade Organization. Can you imagine that? What do you want the people to think? You think the people will say, yeah, they love us, true, true. You've not shown and you don't show that you care. Eh? You don't show that you care. It doesn't make sense at all. Sometimes I they wonder about all these uh, 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 African leaders. I would wonder, so these people, what did they worry them? Eh? Ah, no. Mm -mm. When enough is enough, now so it may be. You don't reach time. Time don't reach. People have suffered too much. It suffered too much. Hmm? I beg. Treat the people well. You won't treat them well. You will not do the, the right thing that you need to treat to do for your people. You won't. You will steal your people's money. Take it to the West. Go and live in lab, live, live lavish uh, lifestyles. Give, carry the money of the people to go and give them. Live big, go and buy big, big houses there. Eh? At the end of the day, when you know uh, you are no more, they will confiscate the property. All the money you get to be turned to people. Own. And the instant made those people say no for the sake of you people, let's return this money. No, they, they themselves will sit down on top. I don't know, maybe not, as maybe not as God won't make it happen, I it happen so so that people I go open. There's nothing else I can say to it because this thing is inevitable. These people are not backing down. They are not backing down. 
they are ready they are even saying bring on the sanctions to force people to become self-reliant that's saying they don't damn the consequences hey they don't damn the question wait, wait till they want to do. not pass sanction hey go make us self-sufficient yeah you will start to make soya soy milk by yourself start to make pap from scratch start to go farm yeah Hey, God, I beg you. Chai. Mm -mm. Enough is enough. Okay, look at the people that were hungry now in a place like uh, Adamawa. Instead of you to give them food, you are buying people. Is there a reason to buy anybody? Now, hungry, the people say that they're hungry. Eh? You go, they buy them. What should they buy them for? Eh? Good. Hmm? These people are so disconnected from the people. Hmm? See you. Look at this man. Agbado appoints ex uh, FRC secretary fired for corruption convicted of essay to probe cbn can you imagine criminals like this guy just around this my god not only criminals the man no oh my goodness ah if anybody went know agbado they suppose the advice and army step down honestly because he go shock him he go shock him mm. hey he go shock him oh mm. See you. Uh, Dele Farutimi says, I am aware they offered incentives to Peter Obi to abandon his court case. Mm. <laughs> hey, Peter Obi when be ara ara died, be ara gum. Mm, that gum when if you put her for for take and take a uh, 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 put her for paper, you know they come out. Ara died blue, be ara ara gum. But you they call her mm. Peter Obi. Hey, forget to. Hi, such a shame. It's such a shame. When, when you don't know how to rule, you don't know how to serve the people, you want to remain there, Sha. You want to die there. You, you don't leave any legacy, nothing. Nothing. Look at it. Eh? Military bases, or foreign military bases, all over the place surrounding everywhere into rikini other people's country eh? i don't know yeah that's what they said that's what the girl said they said sanction us it will force us to become more independent they said bring we invite the sun these people are ready they, they are ready all the videos that i'm looking at they are ready as in they don't care they are ready they are ready for the sanctions they are even encouraging the sanctions they're like bring it on we are ready that's what they are saying yeah? when people don't reach that level you know say you don't finish with that now which which you want to threaten them again they are ready for you Eh? let me play this video nobody give nobody cares that's what they're saying they don't care about the sanction people go learn how to feed themselves by force let me play this video we're all learning this at the same time maybe you, some of you know more than i do but you know uh, i thought musa faki and the African Union organization was to, was going to call for an emergent meeting to solve uh, the problem that we are having in Tunisia. But unfortunately, we have got no leaders. We don't have leaders at all. You know, I have been informed that African Union, ECOWAS, SADAC, uh, the East African organization in the African uh, Pan African Parliament are funded by Europe. Hmm. But imagine China and Russia has cancelled our debit. 
of which that money, more than 20 billion US dollars, was supposed to be funding right now our own African organizations. We don't know where is that money. How can our own oppressor has to fund us with the vast resources that we have in Africa, has to fund the African organizations? The head of African Union is quiet about Tunisia. It is a thing that I would like to talk about. They call themselves Arabs because they are bright and complexion than us. Arabs comes from Middle East. There by Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Arabian Emirates. That is where they come from. There are the first people to do slave trader in Africa. There are the first people to castrate black men. Mm. There are the first people to chemically sterilize African women. Mm. Because they didn't want to see black people multiplying in Middle East, black people multiplying in North Africa. There are some evidences that we, as black people, have been there in North Africa. We built the pyramids. The history written by our enemy was lying about everything. But because they kept on doing archaeologists, digging up the graves, and they found the evidence that all this was under the black leadership. However, today, the, the, the people in Tunisia, the government of Tunisia, is able to do brutalizing black people and take them to the no man's land between the border of Libya and Tunisia and dump them there. But African Union is quiet. Mm. If I was the head of African Union, I think that was the last time we could see the so-called Arabs in Africa. They could have gone back home because they are not the ones who belong to this land. Uh, That's true. How many bodies? How many bodies lie in the ocean? trying to cross the the atlantic ocean just to get over to europe matter of fact they get to morocco they say no they watched black people by tell me why these people will not be mad tell me why black people all over are not, will not be mad it's a travesty you have african union you have ECOWAS. that kind of thing happens no peep from them nothing they don't say anything Nothing. They don't see and they don't say anything. They don't care. Eh? They don't care. They do not care. <laughs> hey. and again another thing is why is it that african leaders when they want to go to uh, places that are non-africa why don't they dress in their native attire you see this thing of wearing suits is so annoying to me wear native wear your native attire be representative of the region you come from so much to do, man. So much. Hi. See, let me play this one. This one has a message for African leaders. Let me see. This is an urgent message to all African leaders who are involved in peace negotiations between Ukraine and Russia. I am very, very disappointed that you have decided to get involved in a war that does not concern us. Sudan is burning. Somalia is bleeding. Congo is bleeding. Why don't you listen to your people? 
Why have you decided to get yourself involved and humiliate yourself? South Africa, Uganda, and all these other African countries who have got involved in peace negotiations with Russia and Ukraine. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. I am giving you 24 hours to return to your respective countries. 24 hours to return to your respective countries. I want all the military army officers in these respective countries to understand that your leaders have 24 hours to go back to their respective countries or else. I won't repeat this message. I will not repeat it. It is to all the African leaders who are involved in these peace negotiations between Russia and Ukraine. Misplaced priority. Misplaced priority. Listen to your people. You have 24 hours to return to your respective countries. Do they 24 care? hours. Do they care? They don't care, oh God. I'm sorry, we the same message to them. You went out one ear, come up for the other one. I beg you. Mm -hmm. See, here, Ghana is the largest producer of gold in Africa and number eight in the world, but 98% of its gold belongs to American and Canadian companies. Can you imagine? Mm borrows dollars from imf and world bank to buy its own gold on its own land owns only two percent of its gold on its land isn't that a travesty i'm sure it's the same thing with nigeria Hmm. In the um, what's this guy in South Africa? His great, his popularity has really grown. No, I forget his name. <laughs> Look at the stadium full of supporters. My goodness, if there's an election in South Africa next year, this man is likely to win. No. How many countries so far now? I think there's um, Malema. Thank you very much. Black experience. Malema. Male, Julius Malema, his popularity has skyrocketed. If you see the stadium, this I don't know what that stadium is. I don't know what its name is in South Africa. Filled to the brim with people. <laughs> Chanting. I'm telling you, man. That man ain't going to be president for South Africa. Oh. I was watching some of his interviews that he was giving. Man, the way that man, they look people, if they tell them to their face. Hey, God. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Hey. Mm. No, no, no. Honestly, African leaders, I hope that this is a one, you know. Look at it. Now, Malema, look at the guy, they chant. Hey God, I never see man like this before. Wait, well, I don't see, but I'm just the way he's able to carry people along. Maybe they said he couldn't win any election in South Africa one time. Look at him now, man. I march forward to the victory of our people. The revolution in South Africa is guaranteed that under the EFF, this country will be the better. Stand up, South Africa. Make sure that South Africa, you are counted with me. Run, South Africa. Stand and make sure that our people understand that they need to be counted. You must be counted. You must be part of history. You must make sure that you are one of the people who are going to deliver economic freedom in our lifetime. Freedom in our lifetime. Man, God.
I don't know about that. Ephrata, welcome. You say the powers that be. Who are the powers that be? Man, I don't know if you've been following him lately. Oh, the man, the chances are getting high up there. And a lot of um, I think I, I was watching an interview of his where he was saying they were asking him, you know, they're telling him that a lot of the Yubo people say they're going to leave if you win. He said, Anna today, say when Mandela wanted to run, they the same Yubo people said they were going to leave, that he has even been to the houses that they evacuated and left. He said when the Mandela really became president, he got his stuff and left. They got their stuff and left. He said, so it won't be new. The guy is gaining popularity. I don't know. Who are the powers that be? They're not be human beings. This one in the, the whole of Africa is looking for a way out of the West now. <laughs> There's a lot going on, no, my people. I can't just bring it here to share. It's not, they're not allowing the videos to be shown. They're not allowing it. You know, because they don't want people to know. I don't think so, Ephrata. I don't think so. You think that this whole thing even though then who, who there's no way they're going to block uh what's his name peter Obi. the our eyes are still on the judiciary and there's a lot happening right now that i don't know i think the only way out is peter Obi. there's no way there's no way else there's nowhere else because all the people that they have there they're just puppets they don't care about the people they're more interested in their own everybody see look at what's happening all over africa now there are coups happening all over so I don't know. I think something is going to change. You know, they're not going to be able to block it up. It's not in their hands. It's not in their power to block him. They can't do anything. It's only delay they can delay, but they can't deny it. It will certainly happen. Yeah, the way some human beings make them up. You know what's happening right now? Five five African countries have been taking over. Cool. They are getting rid of the so-called Western puppets. And they are not repentant about it. They are ready. They don't partner with the Wagner Group for Russia. Hey, God. And I've heard stories about the Wagner Group. I've seen some of the videos. Or more. The, those people were former criminals, Abby. <laughs> hey, I don't know. There's something happening, no? I don't know. It's not going to go the same way that they expect. It's definitely going to change. It's definitely changing. You know, things cannot just continue like this now. Africans are tired. Look at what happened in Adamawa. Only because people, they're hungry. They go look for food. See what thing happen for them. And you think people are not, you think that people are not watching. Not be that South African lady come out from Echo as come talk, say, the the president select, say there's illegitimate issues. Eh. That, eh, people know what is happening. And everybody is watching. You know, it might be, it might take, it might look like it's taking long, but we're getting there. Things are happening, you no? Know? How it's going to happen, I don't know, but it certainly would. It's not going to remain like this forever. Things are happening. Winter has come. Winter has come. Oh, my prayer is me. I don't want, you know, this whole cook thing. I don't want these West people that are Brazilians. My own is West Africans should be careful. They should not encourage war with each other. I beg. We don't need it. Africa is still trying to get itself together. It's bearings. We don't need it. To, we don't need that fight. I beg. May everybody hold. May they just draw their may they draw their weapons. Stay for one side. Because we don't need that. We need to build Africa. There's just been too much damage. We can't continue like this. We cannot continue like this forever. You know, it can't keep going on. You know, I've been checking. I've gone to YouTube and checked to see there are no videos at all about this whole thing going on in Africa. They're not going to show it. They don't want people to know. Even some of the videos, I can't even share them. They restrict them from being shared because they don't want people to know. But they're putting out news out there. Meanwhile, I hear that uh, Enam Dekano has been released to the hospital to see his doctors finally. I just saw that news not too long ago. He has been released um to be able to see his doctors why don't they just let this man go honestly what's the point if not be wickedness why don't just why don't they just let him go eh? i know say people hand did that whole thing i know eh? i know so oh, oh, for, 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 for people hand go did that thing 
I'm very, very sure about that. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh God, bandits again, no? Ah, Nigeria. Kai. Look at see people on the streets excited, excited. See crowd, my goodness. Let me show. I think I'm able to share this one. the Russian flag. Oh. Ah, this man is trying in Abia State too. Look at him fixing the roads. Hey, God. Hey, you just are not move. Go Abia State. Be so. Wow. The man is fixing things. So doing things, man. Eh? He gave Kano, he, um, what's it called? You know Kano that brought victory to the women's league, football, women's fo uh, female football women's league. Abia State, we talk about. Okay, oh. mm. all eyes on the judiciary. Judiciary, give us judgment. Let's know. Let's know if what did they happen? Not they fear you. You know, you know they panic. I don't know what else because there's no hiding place. So all of them are no hiding place for anybody. I see don't reach ground. I go touch everybody. <laughs> no hiding place. So look at these people. They went to collect food. Come on, I won't finish them. The concert security agencies over them by two people on top of oh God Nigerians. Ah, I never see you. God, I beg. Mm -mm. Mm. In Burkina Faso, President Thomas Sankara's ideas are back with President Ibrahim Traore. You can buy a man, but you can't buy an idea. They even resemble self. See their faces. A resemble this my face stuff. Mm. I've been more listening to this thing again. And someone asks us, well, what is the role of Africa Command? I say it's bringing whole of government and bringing regional solutions. Uh, to our African partners when asked. And then at the same time, um, the neighboring country of Niger, Mali, we've just seen now that the U.S. there also have placed sanctions on some of the military officials. What does this all mean then for the ECOWAS region? It's quite unstable right now. And unfortunately, you have uh, the chair currently, it's Nigeria, and the president of Nigeria, you know he's also facing a lot of pressure in his country in terms of how the election uh, panned out in terms of the results, some questioning the credibility of the elections. He issued a strong statement yesterday, but already when you read the reaction to that statement, people were already saying, you yourself, you are not legitimate. And therefore, this time around, ECOWAS is not as strong as the ECOWAS that we are used to. You'd recall when there were challenges in the region previously, they were quick to react and to respond. And there was that credibility because uh, uh, those who were speaking at that time who were leading the regional body had credibility. But right now, it's on a very shaky ground. Wow. <laughs> 
Mm. Let me play this video for you guys. Always mention that we have got two problems in Africa. Two problems. The first problem we have is our African leaders that are puppets of the West. That is our first problem. The second problem is the West themselves and there are so many international organizations that are here in Africa to monitor and control us as their slaves to ensure that we comply with the so-called democracy, democracy which is their instrument that is used to measure if we are still uh, those slaves that are you know uh, complying with the, the western rules if we are still uh, innocent slaves that does not resist slavery that's that's how i can defy democracy i'm saying this because uh, i would like to send a warning to the african leaders that if they don't correct themselves now the people of africa are no longer fools they fooled us long back when they formed their political parties, the armed political parties like Renamu in Mozambique, like a, a, a UNITA of Jonas Savimbi, and now they are coming with the other so-called democracies that are not armed, giving them some money and call them a, a, a de democratic elected leaders who must be elected on favor of the West. They fooled us there. But we are no longer fools again. Recently in Uganda, it's two months back, we've seen a bodyguard, a police man, a bodyguard of a minister, shot the minister and shot himself, sacrificed his life for the truth. Recently, now, I think a few days ago, we've seen a minister from Senegal who was overseas in Europe, and he met the Senegalese there. They taught him a lesson. That is an innocent warning to the African leaders. We are watching you every day. We know what you are doing with Africa. The likes of Adama Baro, the puppets of the West, Akufo Ado, Cyril Lamaposa, we know. We are very much aware. We would like to have leaders like Muammar Gaddafi in Africa, like Thomas Sankara in Africa. We don't want the puppets of the West in our land. We have two problems. I will repeat again. The two problems. We are so courageous. We are united more than ever now. We are going to have the 50 million boots and our nuclear weapons. We will defend our land to the last year. Hmm. Let's make it easy. Yeah. Are they here? Now look at African Union, the AU. I'm not seeing the purpose of AU. I once suggested that African Union has to be led by five men that he has to be elected or uh, nominated independently. So from the five regions of Africa, from North, East, West, Central, and Sadak, that he, these five regions of Africa has to uh, elect non-political but independent individuals mm -hmm. not the so-called politicians those whom are failing their own constituencies those whom are failing their own respected countries to go and head again the african union we've got musa uh, musa fakide is is the the, the, the the chairperson of african union but right now imagine sudan is burning if we had the independent individuals who does not look for or camaradism a certain kind of saying the brothers in arms right now we could have sent our 50 million votes from the united army of africa to go and diffuse and neutralize the two generals without taking the side two thousand people already are dead more than 20 million people are displaced homeless seeking for the so-called humanitarian aid right now in sudan but we've got the african union the chairperson, the head of African Union, are doing nothing. Why? 
because they have got some political interest from their own friends, from their own brothers in arms. We want to see the members heading the African Union and the African Parliament being elected by the people, not being elected by the so-called politicians who are failing. Today, our resources are going every day. The, 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 the private jets from West uh, and from United States are coming to Africa with so many kinds of weapons being given to our people. We've got so many wars in Africa. Africa is not at peace. Africa is at war. Africa is burning. Sudan is burning. DRC is burning. Who is supplying the weapons to the so-called Jihadist in Mozambique? Who is doing that? But we've got African Union, well relaxed, saying nothing. We need to change the African Union being led. I, I will say myself, I challenge the chairperson of African Union. If myself and him, if we say, can we be elected by the African people? I can beat him on the foot. Who elected him to be there? He is just there under a political appointment, disappointing Africa. So many kind of pandemics are being sent to Africa because no one is defending, nobody is protecting Africa. Mm. Why do we have a use of African Union? Slumbering, sleeping. African Union Day. Wow. Hey, Omo. What are you? People are vexing. Hmm. Hey. People are vexing. Okay, let me play this off for you. Hmm. National transactions using national currencies. It is important to vigorously switch to national currencies, including the ruble, in financial settlements of trade transactions. In this regard, we are ready to work with African countries to develop their financial infrastructure, to connect banking institutions to the financial messaging system created in Russia, which makes it possible to create cross-border payments independently of some of the Western systems that exist today and impose restrictions. This will contribute to improving the sustainability, predictability and security of mutual trade exchanges. We will offer our African partners the lifting of restrictions. I am convinced that such comprehensive cooperation will allow us to increase our qualitative ties with Africa. Now the last sphere of probably essential that is essential to the maintenance of uh, African sovereignty uh, that Vladimir Putin mentioned that I want to mention as well is probably uh, Russia's offer to African students to study in the Russian Federation so that Russia can share its expertise and knowledge with African experts who are going to go back to their home countries and make them a better place. Almost 35,000 African students are now studying in the Russian Federation to get that sort of expertise. And the Russian president promised that these quotas are going to be increasing uh, as time goes on, and they already have been increasing significantly. So given all those areas of cooperation between Russia and the African continent, it looks like uh, there's a bright future ahead of relations between those two parties. Uh, we did speak earlier with the director of the African Broadcasting Union, uh, Gregoire Jacca, about how the news is covered on the African continent. And he said this, he said, it's up to journalists to uncover the facts. He also said that viewers around the world have the right to watch and read whatever they want. And more importantly, they have the right to decide for themselves. First thing, the balanced information comes from the journalists who uh, are collecting the news, creating it, and broadcasting, broadcasting it. He must always bear in mind that what is important is facts at the basis level first. Now, it's not, I think it's not fair for somebody to decide that I will block you, I will not block, I will not block me. People are free, everybody has his agenda. Uh, what is important, that's why we welcome, as journalists, we welcome this summit. We welcome this new way of doing, so that if RT is blocked in one country, or if you cannot have uh, news from, uh, from 
uh, 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 if you cannot have news only from one side, then we have also from uh, uh, RT that can balance the news. If it was unbelievable propaganda nonsense, then, then surely it would be good to let the average person watch it for themselves and make up their own mind. But no, no, no. The British government says, you cannot watch this. We don't want you knowing what the Russians are saying. Do, do, do you see my point? Is it right yes, to Yes, I, I see it. Uh, but as an African, I think this speech is not, we are not concerned by that. Because we in Africa, we did not receive a lot of time active. And I think what is, what will start now, uh, undergoing internet. Hmm. So there's a lot of it so transaction. apparently going on. They're sharing the news, but um, they won't let you see it on um, regular TV. They don't want you to know. It's well, very well that? guarded. They're guarding it. They don't want to the information get out there. They don't want people to know how far. Hmm. Hey. Let me play this video by I'm now watching you, my good friend Jude. I'm now watching you and you are comrades in arms. This spirit must now spread. This spirit must have a foothold in Johannesburg, it must. Or it must have a foothold in Maseru, in Lesotho, it must. Or it must climb up to Mbambane, in Eswatini. Or it must go to Maputo, in Mozambique. Or it must go to Windhoek, in Namibia. Or it must climb up to Lilongwe in Malawi, it must go to Lusaka in Zambia, it must go to Luanda in Angola, it must go to Kampala in Uganda, it must go to Hargeisa in Somaliland, oh, it must not stop there, it must go to Nairobi in Kenya, it must go to Dodoma in Tanzania, no, it must not stop there, it must go to Kinshasa, oh, it must go to Banji, oh, it must go to Lome, it must go to Kotonou, oh, it must not stop there. It must go to Juba, and to Addis Ababa, and to Asmara, and to Sudan in Khartoum. It must go to Cairo, oh, it must not stop there. It must go to Tunis in Tunisia, oh, it must go to N'Djamena, it must go to Ouagadougou, it must go to Nwakchad, it must go to Accra, oh, it must go to Monrovia, oh, it must go to Rabat. Oh, it must go to Algiers, it must go to Monrovia, it must go everywhere in Africa. This spirit must go there. Hey, my people, there are things happening, you know. Africa, I think Africa is waking up. Boom. People are waking up. People are waking up. Things are happening. Hey, Tato, since you're here, I was saying earlier before you came in, that it's looking like Julius Malema is likely to win the election in South Africa. What do you think? What are your thoughts about that? And um, Ephrata was saying that the powers that be will not allow him, right? So I want to hear, I want to know what your perspective is on that. Because, man, his movement is grown. Oh. I mean, I look at the people in the stadium that came to listen to him, to hear him, and I'm amazed. I'm like, wow, this man movement don't grow. It's huge, massive, you know. And I saw a few interviews actually by uh, a journalist that interviewed him, you know, about the people's the Oyibo people's the palm color people's concern 
about him being um how you say they won't allow him why do you say that who's not going to allow him who's not going to allow him oh, wow is it up to them hey hey who's not going to allow him i'm curious who are the people that will not allow this man They won't allow him <laughs> to rule his own country. Oh, wow, some people get live a Well, what be their faults? Now, the way they say, see Africa, their fault, too. My people, so that's it too, about this issue with all these riot, uh, the schools that are taking, taking place all over Africa. You know, this is it's happening. Um, but I still stand with instead of them going all the African leaders trooping to Russia. Why did they not? Why did the Russians, Russia people, not come to Africa? That's what it's supposed to be. Africa senior, I don't understand. They need to rethink that whole thing, you know. Instead of African leaders going all over to go to Russia, why they not make the man come meet them for Africa? Eh? Make the man come meet them for Africa. All these subservient ways of doing things. I just, I mean, I, again, me, I don't trust any palm colored person. Simple. You understand? I not trust any palm colored people. I not care what they feel so they feel good. Because me, I believe say with this, we get waiting we fit you take sustain ourselves. We don't need anybody here. Everything where we need, we get out of that country. Everything. Hey guy on one lele, good evening. Welcome. I've been in the morning for your side. Yes, yeah, so I'm broadcasting from my corner of the world, bro. <laughs> My corner to the rest of the world. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Good to see you. You know? So, well, while we're keeping our eyes on the judiciary, we also have to, you know, keep an eye out for what's going on around Africa. We can't ignore that. I'm sorry. Niger is our next door neighbor. If Kasala boss for Niger, it will trickle down to Nigeria, whether we like them or not. So we need to pay attention to that. We need to definitely pay attention to what's happening in Niger. It matters, you know. And I would say, I don't know where, I, who they listen to this, but the government, please, you people tread softly. Because it's easy for people to join, to hit people's heads together. When they hit on their head together, I think they go abandon on for desert. Do. <laughs> they go abandon, they go live, on, they go supply on everything on I need to take by each other. They go come out. Because whether we like them or not, so Niger is the next door neighbor. We can't afford it. We need to be very, very careful. We need to be careful. You know, here, the sanction no move them. More. They say, in fact, they, they wait. They even want to give them more sanctions because you go help them. they self-reliant. They are ready for anything. And with this Wagner group on their side, that man, that video that I played, how many nations on I want to see with five other people, five other nations? <laughs> I beg go, you know, don't send our troops finish for Nigeria to go buy for Boko Haram war. So Biko government, I know so now they listen to anybody. Big Mona not do anything when go. When it will affect us, so we the now I we they now make we they look judicial. Make judiciary make judgment fast, fast. When we know which one we did, because we can't afford it to. Yeah. Hey, ah, yeah, ripple effect in exactly. We can't afford it to. We really can't. Yeah. We really can't to ripple effect. I'm telling, and you know, Niger is just right next to us in Nigeria. It's just a border. If you stretch your leg, you, go, you don't enter Nigeria from Niger. So please, there's no need to. Mona no go cause problem. Mona no let them 
uh, make una they fight each other. I beg. We don't need that right now. On top of the hunger when they land, on top of the insecurity, then they can't add this one, Joe. We don't need that. Mona leave them all. Mm -hmm. And say mona behave, they mona treat to na people well now. They hear what you know say you know stubborn. Na na sadi pass. Master head from I know <laughs> I'm telling you. I tell her, I say, shut up there. You must say you're illegitimate. I don't need to talk to you. <laughs> oh more. Hey. See, I see slapped the man across the face, man, with the truth. Ah, God, what a shame. Eh? I should say good if you I'm really pretty sure he's shaking. I am pretty sure that might not be like get liver. Those are people not they get liver. When push comes to shove, they know they fit. They know they fit stand up. Seriously, Atlantic. Seriously, seriously. You don't talk and finish. All of them, none of them get sense. If to say that they do the right thing, this kind of with the experience, when they when they happen for Africa, so nobody happen. So you see that man talk, that man made a lot of sense. Huh? During COVID-19, nobody to represent. Eh? Anything when they have for Africa, no representation at all. All the leaders, they will just, ah, oh God, I beg. You know, we need to restructure everything. We really do need to. We can't. Judiciary must know that the truth is known beyond. I'm telling you, it's very easy to remove. In fact, it's easy. it makes their judgment even easy. You know, because they'll say, ah, so the world knows, okay. So it'll be easy for us to just rule against him. And nothing will happen because what will happen is if they rule and they stand on the truth, people will uh, applaud them for it. They'll be like, okay, these people are on the right track. You know, but it's only when they don't do the right thing. That's when hmm, it's it's they will know. They will that's when they will know. And the funny thing is that they will drop on their private jets and run away. That's the thing. I'm sure Agbado is shaking because right now, yeah. I'm sure he's like, hey, you don't know Hassanafi bust anytime. I'm telling you, I am pretty sure. ANC and other parties is polarized. Oh, really? So Malema is polarized. Hmm. Okay. I just feel like he's gotten uh, some huge popularity. A big guy on the limit that do like I neck remove him for middle of night. A be exactly 2 a.m. They'll just remove him. They'll remove him. Guess what? They go enter the next life. All the judges will come out. They go just come out. They'll go hide them somewhere so that they don't feel touch them. I'm telling you, that's what they should do, really. You're right. Just remove him in the middle of the night. That's very true. Pull an eye neck on them like they did. Man, that would be beautiful. Though. So by morning, when everybody don't wake up, they'll say, oh, the man has been removed, though. Then if I'm middle of night, then they'll come wake up and say, me packing load, come off again. As soon as they announce her, they all show for a house. Or so you'll just escort and come out with it in, in, in his nightgown. You'll say, yeah, Oga, Baba, come and leave. 155 <laughs> guys <laughs> 155 a.m right <laughs> five minutes earlier <laughs> so they'll give him okay i see what you mean five minutes for him to prepare and leave they'll tell us don't don't talk, don't take anything your night down just take your glasses since you can't see without the glasses if a matter of fact we'll hold the glasses for you carry you enter the motto <laughs> He and his wife, you're your bundle they come out. That's it. <laughs> That's so funny. He said, 155. <laughs> That's all you think. Oh, they think he's reckless. Well, he does actually act a little bit reckless. Though. Some, some of the things he says, I think he's a bit reckless. Hmm, okay. So because of that, they won't allow him. Okay. 
But he seems to be very popular among the people, Tato, isn't he? He seems to be quite popular among the people. I mean, look at the stadium, man. It's packed. People all over. Eh? It seems like he's gaining popularity. To me, oh, that's what he looks like to me, though. Like Malema is really get, gaining, uh, Julius Malema is really gaining popularity. Look at the crowd of people that, uh, that came to the stadium to listen to him. It sure looks like people care about what he wants to say, right? Hmm. My people, make I live you now. This um, this cool thing. Maybe maybe carry me come because I see that they think the matter. I say now, wow, what's the apple for Africa now? I know they see different different things. Now I say, okay, well, make I bring the matter come here. We could talk about them because I don't understand it. The apple. Uh, hmm. Sense shock waves. Okay, this was 10 hours ago, so I guess this is old news. Oh, he said General Ch Chiani issued a stern warning to those individuals who may be collaborating with ECOWAS or the government they attempted to overthrow, declaring them as enemies. This raises concerns about potential internal divisions and risk of further There'll be no violence within the country. Everybody's very happy. So this one, uh, the news no full of more arrests. There'll be no crisis within Niger. I think everybody on the street happy. Hey, I better go. I'm going to leave these people alone. See, it's even see that the man on the field we enclosed by himself. Look at them arranging. They're arranging his a uh, his uh, Agbada for him. They are arranging his agbada for him. He can't even wear his cloth properly. They are arranging it for him. What kind of life is that for crying out loud? Eh? Look at how excited the people of Niger are. They are all happy dancing on the streets. Yeah? No more, but this guy, this man, not shown at this video. This man, he has a very stern look. Oh, yeah? <laughs> guys, say leave now. Don't take your bag. We'll send it to Lagos. <laughs> I'm telling you, eh? Echo has given them seven days. Yeah. Yeah, he's sick. Um, he couldn't even see us. Then they help him fix me. I'm glad that they arranged the thing for him. Okay, now, wow. Which kind? This man, very strong looking man. Oh. Mm -hmm. You see, Russia, Africa. Why is it not Africa, Russia? Why do they have to come to Russia today? Why can't Russia go to Africa? All these things, man, they need to uh, they can't lead us, see? they will not stop streets to shame you, Sha. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This Eritrean president seems to be loved by his people. Was that Mali? Is that 
Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he did. Uh six minute message. Yeah, I, I think I played it earlier, I think. Let me see if I can find it and pull it up again. I played it earlier. It was a powerful one. No kidding. I was like, wow. Let me see if I can find it. I can't find it. I'm not going to bother. Maybe till next time. Let me just try on nail and see. This one, let's see if it's a nope, not this. Is it this one? Nope, not this one. Is it Nope. I don't think I can't find the video for some reason. It was a beautiful, it was a beautiful six minutes video. Yeah. They are bothered by it, especially. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're bothered with a guy. I'm very I'm sure they're unsettled right now. I should say they're not they sleep again, to be honest with you. They won't be sleeping anymore. They go, they, they'll come tell the security, hi a lot, hi a lot. Especially the Senegalese president, Maki Sali. Hey, hey, okay, they never want to sit down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that Maki Sali, how long has he been there? He hasn't been there for like decades too. Because most of these African presidents, they're not get shaved. How long has Makisali been there? Eh? People go because of this useless African leaders. People go go they cross Atlantic Ocean. Morocco no go let them pass. They go pie. People go they, they go they look them as if they pie. Hey God, man's humanity to man. Twelve years. Can you imagine? Eh? Just sit down for young people destinies. Twelve years. Thinking when they're born, when they enter, now you'll be 12. You'll be 12. Ah, no. Mm -mm. Yeah, he's loved by his people, right? And hey, because I think I heard, yeah, he's loved by his people and he's gaining recognition across Africa. That's wonderful. Because I've heard some good things about him. 12 years, 7 plus 5. Can you imagine? I mean, is that normal? Eh? These people, their mind, no, they, they have conscious, so they will they trick them. They know they will think, say, ah, no, let me not do this. So, ah, no, it won't be, it won't be good. They know they think, um, ha, no, my jail, God forbid. They know their conscience, no, they prick them. They will, to the point where they will say, ah, no, let me not, let me not do this. Ah, no, God forbid. God forbid. Mm -mm. That's not normal. That's 
it's not normal at all. Only you just want sit down, you just want to stay, sit on top of the people's destinies. I've never seen anything like that in my entire life. In Mali, we had a long problem of terrorism. Until recently, under the leadership of Kenel Asim Goita, we realized that, oh, these terrorists are formed by, by uh, Emanuela Macaron and the Western allies in Syria. Then we decided to remove their international organizations out of Mali, their embassies out of Mali, their military out of Mali, to break the supply chain of weapons, food, and their uh, other uh, necessary resources to fight us to destabilize Africa. When we did that, we militarized the army of Mali. We then went to Russia. We came with so many weapons. We went to confront the terrorists because now we know that the terrorist's mother is no longer in Mali. When we encountered the terrorists there, we taught them a lesson. You know what happened? The United Nations Human Rights Commission raised a red flag with an outcry that we in Mali are abusing human rights. You know the human rights for whom? For their children. Those terrorists that they formed and left there are the people that they're crying of that we are abusing their human rights. But when they are terrorizing and destabilize Africa every day for the advantage of the West to get cheaper resources and cheaper labor in Africa, they don't complain. They don't say anything. You're not here. Imagine a journalist from Europe. We are looking for terrorists. But a journalist from Europe can come with a camera and go and do a documentary inside the danger zone where there are terrorists. Where did he go to the numbers of the terrorists? How does he or she have an access with the terrorists? Their non-governmental organizations are comfortable in the terrorist zone. What are they doing there? They are looking points and points and points and tagging where there are mineral resources and extract using their, those terrorists to fund them with those money, destabilizing the people of Africa. Double standards. Imagine those terrorists, if they don't come in Africa armed, they will come as the journalists, as oppositional parties, as the advocates of human rights with their international organizations. If we arrest them on spying on us, you will hear the outcry from their masters saying there is a human abuse, human rights abuse in Africa. But they've kept Julian Assange for a long time after he has exposed them. And they even threatened to bomb ICC if ICC issues a warrant of arrest to any American citizen. Double standards. Mm. Oh my. Hey. Oh my Africa, shine your ear. Shine your open your ear. See what is going on. Mm. Mm. Open on my ear. Ah, I like this this man, eh? This Ghanaian parliament, the man, eh? His speech make my belly sweet. Oh my god. Mm -mm -mm. See, my Kisali wanted to change the for Can you imagine after doing 12 years, you want to change constitution for another? Thank hey God. They think and do this greedy, glutinous people. Eh? Yes, yeah, so victory, absolutely. Eh? Yeah, he said macaron. <laughs> is, is his accent is the way he said it. Yep, yep, and I'm absolutely after the yep, yep. I'm telling you, and if this I really like what this parliament. If we need all we need parliament members like this all over in Nigeria, we need them like like 40. I'm telling you. Oh, hold on one second. I think I have it on mute. If we put two men in a room 
and give them 12 years, uh, 12 months to produce as an offspring. They cannot produce an offspring. And so, Mr. Speaker, we will continue to stand here. But let me use this opportunity, Mr. Speaker, to celebrate Mr. Speaker, who has been a stalwart and a bastion for this bill. But for Mr. Speaker, this, this bill would most likely have been killed. Mr. Speaker has stood his ground and ensured that this bill has come this far. And I want to use this opportunity with the support of my colleague members of parliament, since we all support this bill, to serve notice to the Western powers that we have taken judicial notice of what they have done to the Speaker of Uganda. After Uganda, after Uganda passed the bill, after Uganda passed the bill, the sanctions on the Speaker of Uganda's parliament and on the sponsors of those bills, we will serve notice as well that if they replicate same with our Speaker and members of parliament, we will also take action against their business interests in our country. Because they, they serve in this country and make money from here and take back home. They cannot hold us to ransom. And that has been asked on this floor, Mr. Speaker. Why is it, why is it that the American Secretary of State has not sanctioned the Secretary of Defense? Because June was declared Pride Month and they had transgender parades. The U.S. Secretary of Defense blocked and stopped a transgender parade on a U.S. Air Force base because he said the U.S. Pentagon, which is their defense headquarters, would not support such activity. Governor DeSantis has passed legislation against open transgender parades in Florida. Why have they not taken on their own citizens? In fact, in 2022 alone, there were 433 actions in state house of legislatures across the United States banning and clamping down on homosexuality. The Supreme Court of the United States, Scotus, just last week, passed a landmark judgment enforcing the rights of American citizens to refuse to offer services to people on the basis of their faith and because they were LGBTQ. Mr. Speaker, it shows you that even America has realized the error of their judgment and are walking back their steps. Italy, 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 Italy in June designated June also as Family Protection Month to counter the, 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 L, the Pride Month. Maybe that's something Ghana should begin to consider, that we make June a Family Values Month to celebrate the Ghanaian family value. Oh, Mr. Speaker, in wrapping up, in wrapping up, Mr. Speaker, I just want to state that the dangers, the dangers of homosexuality are great. Persons who are homosexuals or transgenders, their statistics from the CDC have at least six times higher rates of obesity, substance abuse, and suicidal thoughts than heterosexual people. This has a consequence for our health bill as a country and, and public health, and we cannot turn a blind eye to this. I want to thank every member of this house who has supported this journey so far, especially the committee as well, in bringing us this far. Mr. Speaker, this bill will be passed to the glory of God. Mr. Speaker, this bill that they say the God we serve is a God of love. Yes, he's a God of love, but he's a God of justice. He gives forgiveness. He gives, he gives mercy to those who repent of their sins. It doesn't give mercy to those who stay in their sins. We are willing and ready to offer support to anyone who wants support. But Mr. Speaker, the Old Testament and the New Testament, I repeat with Bible scripture. I cannot end without quoting the Bible. Mr. Speaker, the Bible is clear. In Leviticus 18.22, it says, do not practice homosexuality. Having sex with another man as with a woman, it is a detestable sin. And for those who say that we are living under the dispensation of grace, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 10, don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourself. Those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or are thieves or greedy people or drunkards or abusive or cheap people, none of this will inherit the kingdom of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hmm. The guy came with violence. Hmm. Hey, my people. The man ready come. Oh. It's a no be now. Hmm. 
Mm. I'm not sending a papa message. Mm. All these African leaders, me, I'm still upset with them. I'm still very upset for them to have shown go to uh, they will go all the way to Russia. When Russia supposed to come Africa, eh? They turn out to Russia, Africa, not be Africa, they come before Russia. It's in just they annoy me. Eh? Okay, I think this is uh, the lady I was trying to get her. She has been doing a lot of work. That woman, eh, don't try you before they advise her to retire. I mean, they tell her to step down. Forget her name now. Let me play her video. Understand if, as black people, if we are going to change our circumstances uh, in the world, uh, we are the most disrespected race by design. We were systematically brainwashed, we were systematically put in the state of mind that we are in. If you look at, uh, uh, let's take you back to Africa, prior to the children of Africa being taken out of uh, Africa as slaves, and even after they were taken out of Africa as slaves, the instructions that the missionaries were given in terms of how to deal with the African. Remember, when they came to Africa, they found very resistant people, very uh, um, well-established uh, 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 re religious um, uh, educational systems, uh, people who were so strong that they didn't know how they could conquer Africa unless they addressed the issues of Africa from the core. So they set out the process of letting us believe that everything to do with black and African was bad and everything to do with white was better. White and European was better. We have to understand that. The missionaries were given instructions on how to instruct us and how to control our minds. They were taught, they were told to teach us how to read, but not to reason. It was a systematic process, specific instructions on how to handle a black person in order to get them where they, where they wanted us to be. They used the same process with the slaves on the plantations, where they began this process of divide and conquer, lighter skinned people versus darker skinned people, uh, the straighter your nose versus the flatter your nose, thin lips versus thick lips. It was a process that we have been put through. We have been trained to self hate. I use the example of religion, and I use an example of myself growing up in Zimbabwe. The British did not come to Zimbabwe until 1896. Prior to their coming, we did not know of white color or black color. We were Africans. We were Africans. But the missionaries came in and they told us about Christianity. They told us about Jesus Christ. They told us about the angels who were white and the devil who was black. Then they turn around and say, the angels are desirable. They do the wonderful things. We must uh, aspire to be like them. And they said, oh, by the way, we may not look like this white sheet of paper. Besides, remember, they introduced the color white and the color black. We didn't have that. So we know how black looks like. We know how white looks like. But they turn around and say, the angels are white and we are white too. Never mind how we look. We may not look like this piece of paper, but believe we are white. And we represent the angel. And you're black. You may not look like this cover of my phone which is black, but you represent the devil. The devil is black, the devil is evil. We all must run away from the devil. You don't want to represent the devil. Oh, by the way, you may not look like this black piece of paper, but you're black too. And now let's go to church. And we kneel down in front of the white angels, in front of white Jesus, who we know very well Jesus Christ was not white. Even their own Bible tells us he had crimson skin. We know for a fact that when Mary and Joseph were running away from King Herod, they were told to go to Egypt. Why? Because in Egypt, Jesus Christ would blend with those who look more like him. If he was white, they would have told them to run to Europe. So we have all these obvious lies that we have been told. So for centuries, we have knelt and worshipped white Jesus and white angels and denied that which they told us represented us. 
So they systematically put us through a process of self-hate. It is not by surprise that we hate ourselves. We don't like each other. We don't trust each other. Understand that this has been a systematic process of criminalizing blackness, of teaching us and training us to hate everything that looks like us, and educating that the more we, we look closer to what white people do, the better off we are. So we spend the rest of our lives and the lives of our children and the lives of generations to come if we do not do something about it, hating ourselves, teaching our children to hate ourselves. We are a sick people. Let's face it. We need healing. We have been so brainwashed to hate ourselves. We have been so brainwashed to the point that even the obvious lies, we hear them, we know their lies, but we can't get ourselves to unbelieve. I believe in Jesus Christ. What I have problems with is what they have done with the name of Jesus Christ. Abused his name, misrepresented his name. Religion, they have used it as an instrument to brainwash us. I believe in the religion. It is how it is taught to us and presented to us. It is distorted. It is no longer the truth that the Bible speaks of. But we know that uh, it's, it's something that we need. This woman was a false almost. She really, this conversation about uh, Francophone countries, man, it was a hot topic with her. She had figures. She broke everything down. Yeah, Esther, you're right. Thank you very much, Dr. Arikana. Man, fiery, fearless. They had to advise her to step down because of that France issue, you know. They advised her to step down. I'm sure she's the one that started this come. She's the one that really put touch light on what France was doing to Francophone countries. Because at one point, I think France apologized or something like that. So I think that, man, it's been a long time coming. Man. We don't fight this fight with comes Yeah. It's a trend that was started by France, followed by US, China, Japan, today Russia is in. Africa needs to take a stand and stop running up. Anyway, this is why my eyes is on the judiciary. Peter B is not going to take... Remember during Peter B's, uh, when he came on uh, the violence space, he said something. He said he was talking to an Indian friend and the Indian friend was telling, telling him that they're going to be hosting the G20 meeting, I'll be which meet, whatever. G10, I'll be G20. Mm in india very soon that if peter b is president at that time he would invite him right peter b said no we'll be a member no no need no need to invite me because we'll be a member i like that you gotta know your position and stand in it russia should come and visit you in your house not you going there look at all the number of african leaders that way why did they do this kind of thing embarrassing you don't know your you don't know your position without you the world not they exist hmm? african leaders because they don't know they they go do the do like momo all of them go go they shake the man stand stretch out in leg ego he said when you go come the man come now you get the resources how many resources they get for russia greens you can grow your own greens manage the ones you have eh? <sighs> yeah for her views and unshakable mind dr Ikana was yeah she was removed yeah she was i think from african union she was when i said Gen secretary general i can't remember she held, held the position there they removed her because of her strong views and she was constantly on france for what they did to Afri francophone countries man she was yeah you know, so yeah, he was uh, he was there. He stayed the entire time. Oh, and then uh, uh, what did they call this other guy? This guy, uh, um, Ibori. Ibori was on the live too. 
was in the Twitter space, Ibori and um, Agbado. They were there listening, paying attention. <laughs> they want to hear information from the person when they get vision. I said, they're not their vision. So they, they, so they can't look. They say, maybe you drop some clue for us. I bet people go listen. You know? Everywhere they hot for them now. So they won't come here for who knows. <laughs> it was funny to see. Yeah, it was there. I'm sure Kenya is asleep. Oh. He's probably asleep. Hmm. Yeah, he she exposed, she really did. Yeah, Esther, that's true. She did. She exposed and she exposed France, man, for bleeding Francophone countries. Yes, 500 billion US every year to date. I'm telling you, you see, no one little one that they are all of them started leaving. They are all removing France. They are angry. I think it's it's her because her conversation was in she was passionate about it when she was talking breaking down the numbers how much ah no mm -mm. i sure they're not being handled the truth now they tell you mommy step down because she was speaking a lot of truth that was biting them i'm telling you the thing they annoy me atlantic we get grains for nigeria are you kidding me see you to say not grow up for farm then i feel not know i feel not get idea at I, I they tell you for the small town when we grow up there was rice there were rice farmers have a season like this oh my god nobody they that now nah, like you go they dash people food we go harvest yam we had like that had huge yam bands right once new yam come like this all the old yam get their own band the new yams go get their own band friends go come you go share to your friends all those other people go share to them when the people they get rice farm when they, they harvest like this bags upon bags upon bags of rice so he been okay so he been when they use them as drink for my house that time when they produce our own soy bean uh, drink that time we they even use and make different different things that time so he been so palm oil and uncle palm oil we know they buy palm oil for market people when they get palm oil palm uh palm trees right when they harvest like this now gallons gallons of oil now you they get for your house you know they pay a dime they will give you hardly and then people when they get cassava we had cassava farm so we had lots of cassava we they share out too people when they get beans farm beans I go plant beans, melon. Are you kidding me? Our soil is so fertile. Thank God for that, right? So I don't understand this whole dependence on grain. Why? Why depending on grain from these people? Why? It doesn't make any sense to me. It's very annoying to see. I'm not going to lie to you. It's so annoying. Eh? Tato, thank you so much. I appreciate the super chat. Ah, God, go bless you. Whether you like him or not, God, go really bless you. I appreciate to, all this super chat. They encourage me. Mm. I thank you. I know, sir, I know they talk again. Anybody, what you want to do, do. Mm. I go shall do my own. Thank you so much, my dear. I really appreciate you. You always have, you know, whoever lack you. Yeah, you take on more, more and more. Now you they get overflow. You know, whoever lack for your life, I beg. Before you ask, you don't get what you look for. Yeah, James Ibori was on that life, was on the <laughs> was on the Twitter space too. Hey God, I'm telling you, shame on them. They can't they can't follow who they can't listen in to say that they'll collect idea. I'm sure there were a lot of accounts that were that were fake accounts from APC that were listening in. I'm very, very sure about that. You know. Mm. yeah no it was his actual account to isaiah it was actually agbado's account he's he's a verified account you know uh it was his direct verified account he bore it too you know now people did now when did they go check all those things hmm. yeah so yeah he, she was removed from african union absolutely yeah she was removed from african union as chair to the united nations because yeah it was not United Nations or African Union. It was African Union, no, not United Nations. It was African Union. It had something to do with Africa. So it was Af African Union. 
yeah her truth was biting i'm sure it was biting them yeah pride will not allow them stay for fear of the yeah they won't they will not that's true you know everything can grow in africa i'm telling you guys every waiting waiting for africa you know if you grow for nigeria especially not when you feel you know if you grow no need for the road i know that's how they, they drag green i don't understand the green when they that thing I, they, they baffle me if not if they were talking about equipment but they kept saying grains they asked for grains I'm like what are you doing with your russian green and ukraine green plant your own damn grains man no i manage you to not get I beg not be doing when the uh, abacha did that time remember i say uh, the uh, america sanctioned nigeria they sanction us now not because when they use salt dust that time because they're not they're not going to they're, they're not going to refine the oil send them back to us again come to find out now now many people result to using a uh, uh, salt dust to cook yeah and then people call they use kerosene no longer gas people when they use if you know if you, in fact i think gas uh, pet, uh kerosene now became very scarce people were now using salt dust they will go to construction site and go and pack salt dust to be using to cook Aha. It was during that time now they sanctioned nigeria that time you know we depend on them uh because we don't do anything for ourselves and couple with corruption yeah but that has to change you know it's not a lack of not being able to do this thing so there are people in Nigeria that can do these things. They just don't give them the opportunity. That is the problem. They don't give them the opportunity. That's the problem. There are people on the ground who can do these things. Eh? I know. I I don't, you know, I, every time I ask Tato, I just got tired of asking. Like, I don't know. I would expect that. You know, I've been doing the lives and coming. I'm not, I'm not expecting anything from it. Just as an encouragement, you know, you would expect that people would do, you know, like, okay, for that, you, I, I can't be saying every time, come, let's say they beg. I, I can't, it's just not, I, I, if I, I thank God I'm not depending on this to survive, literally, because I don't know how I would have done it. Thank God I don't have to, and I'm not doing it for any, I'm just doing it because it's something I just feel like I need to be involved with everything that's going on so that we can all both grow and learn together, you know? Saying every time, press the dollar sign, press the dollar sign, so that people will not now think I'm dragging them for money. I don't work for anybody's hand, you know? Anybody will want to use their mind, may they give. If you go on that Palm Color, the YouTube channel, you see people that are doing this type of political work they don't ask. People are just giving one dollar here, two dollar here, you know, and stuff like that. You nobody ask, you know. So I don't know. I I, I used I've done it before, but I've just kind of lost interest in it. Anybody that wants to give, give. If you don't want to give, that's fine. I really can't. That's why I stop asking. You know, I I don't want to every time be asking consistently. Ask, press dollars and press. You know, we are all adults here now. Personally, I don't. I've been on people's lives and I've given too because I know how it is. So when I can, I give. I've done it on a lot of people's lives. But my sister, now so I don't know. I don't know what else. So I just leave them alone. Look, I just do it and they do, they go. You know? Yeah, he was, guy. He was life. He was life. He was life. He was there. I haven't took a uh, screenshot of it now and shared it on my community page. He said, don't ever come to beg for grains. Oh, really? Wow. That's amazing. I don't think I saw that one. Our beloved President's Excellency Peter Obi made it clear that anything that grows in the Western world can grow in Nigeria. Fact! It's a fact. Because of the favorable weather, we, we even have the capacity to grow more. That's just the truth. We have the capacity to grow more. He was there the entire time. He was there the entire time. Guy, one minute. 
maybe somebody was there on his behalf who like they are taping it and explaining because i know most of the things that were said to go by his head so i'm sure he had somebody that was monitoring it for him but yeah he was there his verified page as a matter of fact you know mm. <laughs> um Isaiah, I know that sign. You say, no worries, your face show, your shoe shine, we will press the dollar sign and even restrict airflow until we draw. <laughs> I don't really quite understand, Sha, but it's okay. Anybody may want to drop super chats. Super chats because it encourages someone, you know, it encourages you. And the truth is that even the super chat, YouTube will take 30% of it. So at the end of the day, you're getting, you know, uh, here and there, few dollars. I, you know, I have a, a PayPal account. I just don't. But you see how very nonchalant I am. I don't even post it. I have a PayPal account in my email ad, um, my email address, omayescon at email dot com. You can send me PayPal, but. For lack of, you know, you can just press the dollar sign. YouTube, before anything, will take their own 30% off clean. They don't even waste time. Before the thing reach land, they don't take out. But what the person go do now, you know? And for me, this election means a lot because I feel like we have to keep the momentum going, you know, and keep doing what we're doing because, man, this matters. This is very important. We need to get ourselves together. We need to really, really get it together in our various countries and Africa as a whole. We can't continue like this. This is madness. We can't. You know, imagine you're traveling in within Africa. You need a visa. You need some countries. Countries will require you to get a visa. But I know you won't man will be flying from his own country. He go enter Africa like say in Palo. Yeah, it's crazy. We got to change our mindset, man. We don't like each other. Just like this, Dr. Arikana say, we are not well. We really are not well. We don't like each other. We go embrace outsider. We go ignore our own. I never see that kind of thing before. Eh? We go in, embrace each other. You'll see, you'll see uh, 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 our people, they go marry outside, marry palm color people. They go feel say they don't superior past everybody else. Is that not madness? That's madness. Eh? I don't know. Yeah, they want to take some ideas for free. I'm telling you, that's why they came now. That's the only reason. They, they don't have any ideas. Yeah, tattoo. So you get it right. So that's why I kind of I'm you know every time I feel like I have to ask, every time it just becomes like I don't want to anybody that everybody should know. I mean, you should, you, you're an adult, everybody's an adult here. When you see that somebody is giving something, if you feel like what the person is giving you is valuable, you want to, you know, just to encourage the person. Nothing else. It's not like that person is going to, the money is going to get them. If you give me a dollar now, YouTube will take 30% of that dollar. It doesn't matter how much, you know. So instead of having to repeat myself over and over and over again, if you enter your mind, you give a beg. I know fish out. Until we learn to appreciate each other and appreciate the work that we do. This is part of what Dr. Arikana was saying. You know? The love is part of it. We don't love each other. Do I have to be asking every time, every time, every time? Oh, super chat. Man, I don't, I can't be doing that. Thank God I don't rely on it. To say they rely on our mom, that's all so for that now. So... You know, it's part of the love. You would expect that, you know, people will come, okay, you know what, let me just give a dollar today or two dollars or something, nothing. Everybody just comes, you, you know, they don't care how many hours you spend. They get from whatever it is you're doing. Everybody just goes, what do you do? It's part of the love. We don't have enough of it. We got to develop it. I've been on people's lives and I always make sure I give. Not every day, but I, I do contribute. At least I gave every once in a while, but nah. So, um, yeah, we got to learn to, um, 
Uh, I would say not all blacks. It's not like all blacks don't like each other. There are people who like each other. It's just that it seems more common because of the the colonialization, you know, the way people, the, the brainwashing, you know, it's going to take a while for people to unlearn a lot of things. Personally, I like my black people, no matter how bad they are, no matter how horrible they are, my heart is still with the black people. I don't care, you know? So it's not like people don't like, uh, all blacks don't. So I can't generalize because not everybody's like that. There are people who have an open mind and those things have not affected their brain is not that brainwashed they've been able to unlearn certain things you know so i grew up in a black household surrounded by black people i've had you know great people around me black so i can't there's no way i can say oh blacks don't like they do they do some of them do not all of them but some of them do. a lot of them also do yeah what happened to you when you went to lagos Atlantic. I know, right, Ganwelele? Yeah, visa free all over Africa. That's how it's supposed to be. Honestly, as long as you are black, all you have to do is they just ask you, show your passport, you are car pass. Yeah? I'm telling you, funded by, yeah, it's blocked by officials at African Union in Ethiopia, funded by, yeah, everything is funded by the way because they give them access to the funding it. Because they want to be involved in everything. And guess what? The African leaders are so shameless, they can go and ask them for money for anything, not to use it for anything, you know, to go block road for their people. They don't care as long as that money enters their pockets. Did they not give them money for during COVID? How much got to the people? What did they, did they do anything for the people? No, they didn't. They pocketed that money. You know, so they lie to go and borrow money. Look at IMF and everything. All of them, they did, they did, they will go to collect the loan. The airport security treated white people with more respect than their own people. Yep, I'm telling you, even when you go to, you know, in Lagos, there are certain places in the Koyi, those eyebrow areas in Lagos, where only Oyibo people, they stay there. They have their own school, they have their own bus. And they go, they carry shoulder. You can't, they, you can't come to your, their community. It's not supposed to be happening in Nigeria. Are you kidding me? Then when they come, they call them experts. How are they experts? Some of these people do not even go to college. Some of them not go to college when they call experts. They will come, they will give them a big house, give them a car, they will get maids, they will get everything. But you won't be African. You go come, you will suffer. You go find your own house by yourself. You go do everything by yourself. But when they come, they get everything on the platter of gold. That has to freaking change. It has to change. You can't continue like that. It's a mess. Yeah? Atlantic, you're right. It's a mess. You know? Yeah, exactly. Ignorance is slowing down everything. Yeah, no visa in Africa. We're not supposed to. Before, we don't get borders now. You know? When you migrate from one place to another, you just enter the village, settle down, do your own thing. But now, when you go to people come, create borders because they won't conquer. They won't conquer to overtake, to overthrow. That's all. To separate, to cause hatred amongst people. So they brought the division and all these people buy into one. Yeah, yeah of course. Not being most not being not being most when they talk, say the uh, palm color people no greed, they no greed made they save uh, Gaddafi. Say they stop them from saving in my mind. I can say, did they need your permission? Did you need their permission to save your brother? I don't understand. You didn't need their permission now. They don't have to gather as brothers say, no, let's protect our own. How can you just allow outside that come, come take out one of your own? Anyway, maybe now make this when they happen now, they happen. Maybe this is why it is happening. So that everybody I go open. We need to really learn. If I made a sanction everybody for the Africa, then everybody go they learn by themselves. Until we start having presidents like Paul Kagame of Rwanda, um, Rwanda, Africans with old leaders cannot think about anything good except to amass wealth and transfers to their children like a kingship rule. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, even though I hear say that Kagame rule in a dictatorship, but I not blame the man. I can't even say I blame him. He's doing well for his people. And they said he's extending. How long has he been president now? Isn't it be over 10 years? 
or more. The man has been president for a while. So I don't know. I can't even blame him. Honestly, whatever he's doing, I can't blame him. And South Africa is different now. You know, so South Africa get their own issue, Tony South. South Africa get their own issue now. Appetite. When appetite finished for a year, when they gain their uh, uh, freedom, their independence for a year, you know the brainwash when South Africans go through? Ha. Are you even supposed to know? Tony South, you're supposed to know the brainwash when the black people suffer for South Africa. Those people are suffering from a lot of self-hate. It's not their fault. It's as a result of the brainwashing and the things that they had to endure and go through. When people go through certain things, eh, it gets the way they affect them and the way that they, they see that they get self-hatred because if they not ever get opportunity to rise as you, they rise. You can't go there, comfy. They go, they look you like the enemy. That's part of the brainwash. You know? Yeah, of course, South Africa has a lot of work to do with regards to relationship with other Africans, especially with Nigerians, you know, with what happened the last time, whether they whether they buy Nigerians and all of that. I know, you know, but it's as a result of self-hate that was taught them too. And look, in South Africa, most of them, they're not they good, they're not giving them opportunities to be educated like that. The opportunities are only with a few, and now you go people hand the day. The wealth is in the hands of a few in South Africa. Think about that. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I heard about that too, that he's looting Congo. Something that he has some type of connection with Congo is like a Western arrangement too. Somewhere I'm hearing some things, some conspiracy theories there, you know, about how they want to take over and all of that, how he's related to somebody. Oh, man. There are rumors of leaked emails of showing a U.S. spy gravity stop formation. It's possible. I'm, I'm not shocked because that woman, I'm not shocked at all. I'm not shocked. Uh, Which they called Susan Rice came out uh, and said her mother told her not to be a part of because she was one, one of the dead delegates, one of the people. Her mother warned her not to be a part of it, right? But it's one of the things that she regrets, Susan Rice. But anyway, yeah, that's a topic for another time. Yeah, yeah, um, I won't be surprised, really. I really won't. He, he orchestrated the destabilization of Libya. Who orchestrated it, Atlantic? Who orchestrated it? Yeah, Tony, exactly. So imagine the mind, the messed up mindset. It'd be like now for Nigeria, right? It'd be like how you'll see some people now. Uh, they, if they never bleach, if they never bleach, they go feel they're not fine. You know, na mind, na sickness of the mind be that now. If they never bleach their skin, they know they believe say they're fine. They go see person where they naturally fair. They go, they jealous that person for real, for real. Knowing that that person is not is outside of their control, nobody make themselves right. They go, they they go, they beef the person. That's self hate. Then they will come and bleach their skin, beautiful dark skin, melanin, when natural, to prevent the rays of it. They go go bleach them to look like their uh, fulfillment people. That's self. That's a level of self hate now. You know, so and South Africa has got support from other African countries, you know, especially Nigeria. Nigeria really helped help South Africa. I went to school with some South Africans, university, they came to university, the same university. I went to they were those people were from the ANC, ANC party, I think. Yeah. They came, they ran away, they escaped. They provided escape for them. It was Nigerians that brought them. So they had a place in Surulere that they housed them. So the guy went to my school. That's how I knew. So when I go to Lagos for holidays, he used to tell me, let's go and visit him there. There was some South Africa were classmates. There were a lot of South Africans and Nigerians in Nigeria that time. Nigeria played a very huge role, though. Although most of these people now, they don't know that history for some reason. They don't know. So 
That means that they treat Nigerians anyhow. If only they know the role Nigeria plays, they won't treat Nigerians. They go, they respect them, but they don't. Unfortunately, when people don't know their history, that's part of the problem. The Wari and Kagame had a deal, mainly for instance, with the late Kabila, the father to also. I heard something like that, guy. Yeah. Okay, you're referring to him, huh? Hmm. Man. It was uh, Hillary's influence, so by the way, it's not just him, it was Hillary that pressured him. Oh, hmm. that one. Hmm. Hmm. Rwanda, under the leadership of president, has accomplished economic growth in the last 10 years. Yeah, right. you know. Kagame had and still has the support of the West. Yeah, that's, I heard, yeah, I read something about that. He has support of the West to get the natural and protect some mining. Remember now, when they had this refugee thing, she been a, um, now Rwanda they send them to now, when they build house, prepare houses for them. All those refugees when they send, I think they're from Ukraine or where, when they send sent to uh, uh, Rwanda, when some of them call they reject themselves. They can't invest because they can't realize in a black country. Why did they send them? They were saying no, that they don't want to go. Uh, mm. There must be some relationship there for that to happen. Uh, we used to contribute to them during the 80s in primary school, and it's called Appetite Against Humanity. Yeah, we contributed a lot of money to South Africa. We sent Ecomog soldiers, remember, to go and help them sometimes fight and deliver food. There are many things that Africans and uh, Nigerians did do. For then we had singers too that sang for their liberation. I remember I had people who used to sing for the liberation of South Africa and all of that. It's a shame what is happening. It really is. To be honest, it's a shame. It's embarrassing to all actually say the truth. Yeah, Tato is South Africa, no. Tato, well, it's part of the history. There's nothing, you know, it, it's just, it's what it's, you know, it's part of what has happened. People will talk about it, you know. People will talk, unfortunately, people will talk, unfortunately, but it's for us to you know, do better by each other. To be honest, it's just for its growth. We gotta learn. And we have to teach if we don't, if we see people who don't know, who are acting out of ignorance, it's an opportunity to educate them so that they know, you know, so that they know. It's an opportunity to enlighten them. Because some of these people who act the way they do towards Nigerians is because they don't know. Nigeria has helped a lot of countries, Malaysia, a lot of countries, but you know, the Nigerians go there and they're treated badly. You even look at India, they, they do us anyhow for India now. We help India too. Indians, there are a lot of Indians in Nigeria. A lot of sorry, there are a lot of Nigerians that were born in Nigeria. They're born in Nigeria, you know. But so they treat us anyhow, but what do we go do until we get our until we according to Peter B until we fix our home. People don't go respect us, which is the truth. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. better i mean we just have to keep educating each other and lifting each other up i think that's the most important thing and recognizing you know there's a there's a place for forgiveness and for unlearning a lot of the things that has been learned and for healing ourselves to be honest there's a place for that and it will happen it's already happening i mean that's why we're having these conversations now you know now, ignorance and lack of education. Yeah, exactly. You know, some most of them are they don't have the education. That's true. That's another thing. And ignorance, and when they feel like the opportunities are not there for them, or another problem, you know. And again, I guess in Nigeria, men want to go to South Africa, una they, una they take all the women from their hands. So why they not go best for them? Eh? 
Nigerian men when I reach there, when I go sweep all the women off their feet for South Africa. So the men they beef now. The men are pissed at you guys. They're like, you guys are taking their women away because you guys know how to spoil women. When I go toast woman today, the woman will forget all her problems. She go say, hey, I have met the man of my dream. So, hey, hey, I have met my Odogu. Hey, you'll be happy. Then, you know, you can't collect the woman. Maybe they, they make shakara. Now, then they make shakara for women. No? But when I can't carry the woman, when I can't carry her like egg. You know, no, 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 Nigerian men. Now, can they carry the woman like egg? When you might don't see that kind of love before, never experience her. Hey, go say I buy here. Hey. Uh -huh. So the men too are angry at you guys for taking away their women. You know? Exactly. There's also that too, the caste system. Your fair skin, your dark skin, they're trying to look at you. Fair skin one. Some of you to love your skin. Love the skin you are in. Melanin popping. Easy. Yeah. Melanin is the most expensive. When you're supposed to rub, you rub coconut oil so that that skin will shine, they glister, they glister. No. You want to be like, you don't even need all this uh, expensive. All you need is better coconut oil or shea butter. You're all right. Contentment is very good though. Yeah. Oh, Tony South, you're in Pretoria. Okay. I better go. I hope you're okay there. I think you mentioned it before. I think so. Yeah, I think you've mentioned it before. <laughs> it's in Nigeria. Not be all of them. They do Yahoo Yahoo now. I Atlantic. Why did they talk like this? No, Nigeria men they do Yahoo Yahoo. Not all of them now. They are professionals now. Come on, don't be talking like this. It's in Nigeria men they do. How many of them? I beg, don't let this you now the few ones when they square their name be that now. If they are where they know they do yahoo yahoo for this world. Each of the politicians in Nigeria has said anything about the refiners. Exactly. Exactly. None of them. They don't care. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because Nigerian men treat the women. Because when Nigerian woman, when Nigerian man the toast baby, Nigerian men, because they have that culture already. Of knowing how to toast a woman, they know they Nigerian men are not intimidated. They know be like people when they say that they, they are not afraid to approach a woman. They have confidence, right? Even if they feel say man, this get big pass me, they go still put head. They will say I go try. The worst case, they go say no. That's it. I help us know that, and I move on to the next one. So Nigerian men have that confidence naturally, and they know how to talk to you in such a way that you even can they consider. Even if you make shakara, you can't. You make shakara. Nigerian man don't mind if you make shakara because that's how they were brought up, right? Although some Nigerian men don't spoil in the sense that they don't know how to chase women anymore because they've met some women here, right? That are used that have spoiled them so that the women they chase them so they've gotten so used to that they don't know how to be the hunters anymore, you know, which I think is problematic. But hey, that's a different topic for another day. But basically, a typical Nigerian man will chase you. They understand that. And they like the chase, you know. And if they chase you and they're able to, you know, win your trust or whatever, the man, but the, when the day when you go break your heart, sha, that's the only problem. You might not recover from it for, for a long time because they are very good at <laughs> Oh, my God. All the men go the best for me now. They say this girl they open all our secrets. <laughs> is that is the root of the problem now? Eh? When they see they are beautiful, when the Nigerian men are coming to take their beautiful South African women with big bakasi, eh? figure eight, beautiful women. <laughs> they open the verse. Why they not go verse for now? Nigerian men. Why would they be angry? Think about it now. As an idea, why would they be angry? They see you, you may be not, you know, not be saying you today like that, but you are able to pull some of the finest chicks in South Africa. They will be angry at you. Competition. Maybe they'll be trying to get at the woman and nothing. And maybe they are the type of people that they, they split bill. They don't believe in all this spoiling one and they spoil women and I'll carry them, go out, pay the bill, pay taxi, caring. 
maybe they don't know how to do that and then you're doing that you're even going extra mile because that's your nature and you expect them to be happy with you of course not uh -uh. Hmm. yeah he is yes he's building a modular refinery he's fixing the road i said man I'm, I'm from abia state my name is uh chica from abia state okay so please right now i'm an abia girl hmm. Children, they the life. I beg, go and sit down. We know that shoot children. Isaiah, I should say you did. You don't talk South African woman before. Collect her for a boyfriend. Huh? I'm pretty sure that has happened. Mm -hmm. They form shy. Who they form shy for? <laughs> that the crime there makes South Africa be yes now. Nigerian men, you know they know. Eh? When I will toss woman finish, woman will fall for when I finish. Everything I'll take care of the woman. Meanwhile, the South African men they give them the same attention, like you know. You know, I can't express it, they not go verse. Why they not go verse for now? They go verse now. They'll be angry at you. You know. <laughs> yeah, but not all of them now. There are medical doctors in South Africa, a lot of Nigerian medical professionals. So I mean, hey. Who will not they do that? Where the crime not be? You know? So. <laughs> oh, really? Are they jealous? Why are they not jealous now? When I will come, come collect all their beautiful women. Yeah. They were jealous. They will, they will be jealous, of course. You know? They'll be jealous. You guys. When I will collect their women, toast the women, carry them out, take them out. Maybe they don't do the same thing. I don't know. You know, maybe not. I'm sure there's some great South African men out there. But for Afri Nigerian men, the culture is different. Nigerian men are raised to be family, family people, right? They're raised to 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 chase and don't give up. That's their nature. A Nigerian man can toast even if you say no, he will talk to you again the next day. Not affect anything. Some men don't have that. A lot of men that are not Nigerian, they don't have that. They don't even, some of them don't even toast you. They only they talk to you. They'll just go with the flu. You understand? But Nigerian men put the effort in. They go talk to you. They go toast you. They are not embarrassed. If you say no, they are not, they, they go come. If they like you, they'll still talk to you again. Yeah? So, Atlantic, why you say chasing? Wow, what does that mean? Are you not, you know they chase? I don't understand what you mean by wow. African share butter and coconut oil rich in yeah, and by which are so beneficial. I'm telling you, share butter cook, that's all you need. Even Vaseline, Vaseline, Vaseline is good for black skin. Okay. Go chase Monique. There are men who chase women. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a good thing. If a man chases a woman, he appreciates her even more. Even more. Am I lying? It's a fact. You know? They're bold, like to brag. Yeah, exactly. Guy Walele, you know, you know, you know. They're bold. They like to brag about themselves. And they love the love of the chick. Guy, thank you. Take, take five. <laughs> Guy knows what I'm talking about now. A Nigerian man likes to chase. If you take that chase away from him, he won't be that uh, invested in you. He will not have that interest. You see all this one of, you know, you're in the West and they say, oh, if you just see, you know, it doesn't matter, just chase a man. Not try ammo with Nigerian man. Because of that, I can't, even, I don't know how to do all those nonsense. I can't. Because where I come from, that the man, they chase. So that's my belief. So if you have an interest and you know if you talk to me, that's your problem. I'm not even, I know they look your face, I know they pity you. Mm -mm. Right? So you got to be confident. And Nigerian men have that. So they're confident they will chase you. Worst case, they're not only prepare their mind. Say, what's this? You go say no. Mm -hmm. Move to the next one. You know, they're not they waste time. Ah. That will really not true now. A lie, a lie. There's, is there anything I'm saying right now that's a lie? The real Nigerian men that do these things, they're there. They will tell you. Yeah, you know. <laughs> ah, Atlantic, okay. Oh, this one. Let's like say you're on a long thing, Atlantic. 
go and change future now and leave the women. <laughs> now you body go tell you go and be chasing future without women. <laughs> I'm telling you, big bakasi. I'm telling you that they get big bakasi. Now lie, lie. Now true now. <laughs> I know there are women they find now. South African women are beautiful. Are you kidding me? And they find you. Know, ah, no, that one I give out to them. All. Yeah. <laughs> I say I don't answer Atlantic. Okay. If I enter South Africa, I must confirm before I leave that. <laughs> <See, you know? laughs> Where you want to confirm? <laughs> hey. ah, you know they see them, but South African women are beautiful. Yeah, their women are beautiful. <laughs> go chase your future, men, not women. Okay, Atlantic, go and chase your future. Eh? Leave the women alone. It's okay. Every man can be the same. You can chase your future. Leave, leave the women for the men who can chase and know the game and understand it. Yeah, cat, cat and mouse games. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, uh, Atlantic men have time to chase women. If you don't, that's okay. You do you. There are lots of men who do it. Okay. I know. No, some women, you know, maybe Atlantic deals with women who chase him. You understand? There are women like that, especially in the West here, the Western part of the world here. Some women chase, they chase, they don't, they don't see anything wrong with it. But if you're from Africa, and you were raised that way, all those things, you don't believe in that crap, right? So to each their own. There's some women, so maybe those are the kind of women Atlantic, you know, is referring to. Women who chase him, which is okay. That's what he likes, so let's give it to him. It's not to keep chasing a woman. How can you be keep, keep chasing a woman? Don't you have other things to do? You, the one that you're interested in, that you like, that you like, you really like, someone that you like to spend the rest of your life with, or you have to, you want to at least have some type of future with. Not like kind of women, you don't, you don't chase every woman. That's not what we're talking about, guy. Come on, are you Nigeria and Atlantic? Because I'm not going to show again. No, I don't understand. Yeah, but twin, you can't stop 20s from chasing women, from talking to women. It happens. They're in class. They like somebody. They're going to go after her. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. <laughs> it's in your gene, huh? <laughs> Tony starts saying that people like Atlantic, they fight because of women. Atlantic, they form, say no, they chase women. They say no, get time. Our future in the chase. They chase the bag. Atlantic wants to secure the bag. <laughs> Any woman where you chase me to your tent, though. <laughs> oh my God, you guys are hilarious. Eh? South African women are stunning, yes, and beautiful, yeah. And they got unique facial bone feet. Yeah, they have slim face, right? Slim on the top and then heavy at the uh, on the necessary parts, right? You know, being too uh, um, too vivid, right? Yeah, the feet, the which they celebrate with their. I know. <laughs> There's difference between talking to a woman you like and using your time to chase. What do you? I don't understand. I, I don't think you understand what we're talking about, Atlantic. When we say chase, we're not saying literally you're running after the woman and chasing her like you don't have any other thing to do. I, you know what? I rest, Biko. Maybe somebody else can engage with you in the comment section. Chris says. AIDS prevalence rate is still very high in. Guess what, Ejofo? It's very high in Nigeria too now. Can you do you know? Can you believe that? In Abuja, they said out of they did the test on 119 people. Out of 119 people that had it, they all out of all those uh, 
I think they did a test on a hundred and I want to say twenty something, and a hundred and nineteen people had it, right? Out of a hundred and twenty something that they tested, though, out of the hundred and nineteen, sixty percent of them were men in Abuja. Okay, so people need to be very careful out there. If you don't know how to um, protect yourself, whatever. Really? Okay, you the way may women chase you because you they do your game well. All right. Well done, sir. Keep at it. <laughs> hey, Snoop and the Nigerian singer sang a song. Endowed was she was the in the title. <laughs> ah, Atlantic is preaching. No, someone has thought to they chase women. Okay. I don't chase them. Yeah, just be cool. They chase me. Hey! Atlantic is boasting, oh hey! Atlantic, they tell us saying a fine man. When did they chase that? He arranged as in he pepper rest, so he no need to chase woman. Now woman, now then they rush them. Not being they rush them, now then they rush. <laughs> oh, Coco Bioko, kudos to you, Atlantic, big boy, big guy. When we made the chase. <laughs> It's supposed to have bubonic shape. What do you mean bubonic shape, I beg? <laughs> what does that mean? Oh, my goodness. What cover? Why did I start this conversation? Now, you are taking me to where I don't know. Eh? Ah, as I say, AIDS is manageable. It's not a death sentence, okay? AIDS is high because there's poverty in the land. Mm. Okay yeah yep i read it i read the article today actually earlier on today i saw that i was like wow people need to be careful though. there's a time for every everything not be every time you go the you go the chase with your bro <laughs> and don't forget it's high in most african countries not only is that yeah exactly that's why i mentioned nigeria it's yeah it's on the rise it's it's very bad in abuja i hear i'm pretty sure lagos too i'm sure you know I'm pretty sure it's it's high in Lagos as well. It's it's what it is, though. Poverty, man. This is what suffering does to people. You know, this is what suffering does. People start to do all kinds of things just for money, you know, to survive. You will blame them. You can't blame them now. You know what I mean? You can't blame them. Ah, he's a big ah, Atlantic now, big guy. Oh. Hey. Oh my god, you're a big guy. Uh -uh. Hmm. God, you don't have time for all these shna shnadigans that you are doing, chasing women. What a waste of time. You know, in pepper rest. Now then they rush them. You know, they rush women. So it's the apple now. <laughs> I like that. What I mean is, most men are obsessed with one woman and they can't get over it and be murmuring and drooling over her. That's not good. Go there make your intention known and be cool well i don't know man there are people who fall in love are you saying that they don't they can't fall in love again you can't help who you fall in love with and how you're going to react you know you don't have control over that i think you know <laughs> oh my god Guys, but they carry me go where I don't know. I bet wait till me say I don't come again. It's in again. <laughs> 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 and you're just cast it yourself last week. <laughs> oh my god, this is so funny. <laughs> hey, God, I bet go. I bet more. <laughs> 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 I know, right? Tato, it's crazy. I don't know if this company has taken a different one. And your friend just would come and say, I beg a house up. <laughs> he was castrated last week. <laughs> oh my god. Eh? Atlantic is a fine Atlantic. Find my way, no get money. Which woman can see you this time around? <laughs> oh my god. Atlantic, I won't take that standing if I were you. Mm -hmm. So the South just throw, just throw jab at you unnecessarily. Yeah? That's not fair to the South. How can you say Atlantic doesn't have money? The guy has secured his bag. He's resting. He doesn't need, 
it doesn't need now then they rush them you know they hear now then they rush them, not being the rush them uh -uh. i better leave the guy say that they be rush <laughs> <laughs> and that is a big boy just take it <laughs> just take out because tony sal just they give hand to you ah uh -uh, tony sal don't eat a laugh i mean leave leave atlantic atlantic is a made guy what are you talking about <laughs> hey men too fine come get money join them too <laughs> Yeah, sure, this is a real concern. Not only, yeah, it's all over, you know, whether it's because of all the stuff that's going on. I don't know. You go help people, I beg. Atlantic is teaching, though. Tony South, he say you don't need money all the time to get a woman just be cool. Tony South, take learn. If they teach you, say me you just be cool. Eh? Instead of rushing, just chill. <laughs> <laughs> Why use money for women? That's not cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if you can't take her out to dinner, you don't take her out to a date, you don't take her out for coffee. What are you saying? You know, you don't at all. Okay. That conversation then don't do and well though. <laughs> Be very careful because anybody will pass your backyard go collect with <laughs> Not saying you shouldn't spend for your woman. Eh, hey, that's what we're saying now. It's your woman. It's not just every woman. And like Atlantic is saving his money. <laughs> Atlantic is in a stingy men association. Do I remember that one? <laughs> stingy men. I write them. Stingy men association. <laughs> we know they give she she. <laughs> You say we know the AKA. We know the give she she. Oh my God, this is funny. I have a mother live Atlantic. Don't put money forward as a way to get a woman, is what I'm saying. Did you hear that, people? Atlantic is preaching to you guys. Tony, Isaiah, Guy on Walele. Someone are not put money forward as a way to get a woman. All right. It's they give you they drop, they drop gems from from now. Uh, they drop, you know, cues. Look at they learn. Yeah? You're not gonna get these classes elsewhere. You won't get it elsewhere. Okay. Mm. Uh, let's see. Yes, he's a very proud member <laughs> of of Stingy Men Association. I'm telling you, he's a very, very proud member. Hey, Jeffrey, you have to go and Google that too. Me, I don't know. You're carrying me to where we don't know. We're not about to start having that kind of conversation. The Google is your friend. Mm -hmm. A proud member, Atlantic, you be a proud member of Stingy Men Association, aka we know they give shishi. Eh? <laughs> Tony South says, Atlantic, no money, no love. Please get it right, bro. <laughs> oh my god, you guys are hilarious. And that funny. I know Kenya will be reeling in this type of conversation. I'm happy he's not here. Mm -mm. No, Kenya will take it to another level. Mm -mm, baby. It's good. Kenya, please be sleeping. No, don't wake up. I beg. Tomorrow, you have things to do. So please sleep well. Yeah. I pray 
I pay for her coffee or tea. I mean, exactly. Come on. You're meeting someone for the first time. You want to offer her coffee or tea. You can't just, unless she's the type of person that likes nature and chooses, okay, let's go for a walk. If you're just meeting her for the first time, right? Let me say your job. Ah, ah, waiting. Atlantic. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Exactly. Paying for coffee is okay. But I don't think showing off money is a good idea. And that's not what we're talking about now. Not be showing off money. Not be really talk about. It's gross when you show off money. It tells more about something you're lacking when you show off with money. It should, it's, it's, it's a kind of a low self-esteem, you know? <laughs> if your first says, is it better to go marry from Nigeria or here in the US? I, I mean, if you might, why do you want to go home to go and get married when you're already here? Is it not better and more economical to find somebody here that's decent that you can get along with, that you share similar values? That you don't have to worry about teaching how to drive, teaching the rules of how to do things and all of that. I don't know about you. I'd rather meet someone here and marry the person than go home. Why would you want to do that? Because in, in a lot of cases, not all though, in some cases, you go home, marry Nigeria. So a lot of people will fake love you, right? They will love bomb you. Because they're, they're all they're seeing is you know they're coming to the US and then when they get here, once they get comfortable, then they realize that you they don't want to be with you. Then what do you do? You now become bitter. Okay? You now become bitter, you now be threatening, and you now be doing why do you want to put yourself through that? It's better for you to find someone here that you can get along with, right? That you can that you share same values with you know, and get married, then go home to Nigeria. That's my own take. Oh, I don't know. That doesn't mean you can't fall in love anywhere. You can go to Nigeria now and meet somebody that you like and you fall in love with the person. Hopefully the person loves you for who you really are and not because you have the opportunity to be in America. You know? That's one thing you have to worry about. So, personally, if I were to advise anyone, it's better for you to find someone here and get married than go home. There's so many decent women here in America, many of them, you know. So, women like men who are bold, engaged, goal directed, not a nice drool man drooling over her, running all over her. Um, women like somebody who dotes on them too, sometimes now. Hmm? Women like attention. Atlantic, you not be like that, not straight like ruler like that. Oh, what we say the view, you don't know how you're gonna react, or you know, you're gonna feel with an, with somebody that you like, you don't know how you're gonna respond to it. So you don't know if you're gonna be drooling, you might be drooling over her. You don't know that until you meet the person. You know, you don't show off, that's good. It's not good to show off. It tells more about you when you show up. Of course, not in four hours a day. Now, you're not a kid now. No, no. Mature. I'm assuming you're mature, right? Not in four hours a day. Why? That one has uh, possessiveness now. That one caught up another thing. Yeah, 24 hours. I go run, though. Yeah. So, what did they happen? Uh, Nigeria girls have better morals. Um... Yeah, but you there are, a lot of, there are Nigerian girls here in America. Nigerian girls are here. That's what you're looking for. The Nigerian girls here now. You know. I'm not just Nigerian girls. There are also African girls that are decent too. You know. What what state are you in, uh, Christopher? Let me see. Exactly. If you already find someone, thank you very much, Atlantic. That's the thing. If you already find someone here, it's not it's not worth it going all the way home, you know, just because you want to find someone. It's so not worth it at all. The risk is too much. 
And I'm not saying that you can't go home, meet someone and fall in love. That can happen also. But if you're already here and you're, it's better for you to shine your eye here and, you know, make yourself available or whatever, you know, and meet someone here. The ones at home will never understand you unless you just left one year. Yeah, because again, you have to understand what some people don't know is that the mindset is different. So when you bring someone from Nigeria, the way you see things miles apart, you guys are miles and miles apart. Thinking wise, the way you process is very, very different. You know, unless you like the wahala that comes with it. There's some people who like that kind of thing, but hey, to each their own. Oh, sorry, guys. I don't have experience in it. Ah, hey, Atlantic, sorry, no verse. So you don't have experience in Nigerian women. Ah, now, wow, you did brag. Not bragging. <laughs> who you call which women you get experience with? Are you from Nigeria, Atlantic? First of all, you mind? Are you from Nigeria? Maybe you're not Nigerian, no? and I'm assuming you are. Yeah, that one, Lily. Atlantic always confident, pay the bill, but never show off your deep pocket. Otherwise, it's another losing game. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Men in the US have reduced to almost to nothing when it comes to having equal rights with women. I don't know about that, Ajo. For I don't understand what you mean by that. That men have rights in this country. What are you talking about? You hear every now and again, you hear every now and again where women are not paying um uh, what's it called? Um paying a uh, um uh, spousal whatever allowance. So what are you talking about? Sometimes it's the men who have with their children involved, the women the, the men have custody of the children, you know. So I don't understand what you mean. You're, you're generalizing. And that's dangerous. You're generalizing. That's not true. Men in the US have not been reduced to almost nothing. If you go and meet the wrong type of woman, if your eye go meet woman where they say pass you and really is out to deal with you, yeah, maybe that will but I don't know. It's not the case. I've, I have actually seen more men get paid spousal allowance than I have seen women get paid spousal allowance when issues. I have I've seen more men have rights. Eh? Go to court and they are giving the judgment is in their favor than I've seen women. So I don't understand what you mean. You know, when you put it like that, if you're already projecting that, that's actually a dangerous thing to project. And to think of for yourself you know remember what they say what you think you know becomes so if you're already putting that in your head and saying because of the way the system here is they find there are decent women out here who don't care about those things as long as they're okay they're fine and you get along that's all their interest they don't care about all these things that you're worried about worried about they don't Equal rights. Who, who who cares about that? You know. So you need. It depends on the type of woman, no, that you're dealing with, oh. So you have to, you have to be careful what type of woman you're hanging around with. Exactly, Isaiah. It's a broad, very broad topic. Yeah. You know. Oh, you're in Iowa. Oh, wow. Okay. How's the weather like over there? Yes, there are decent Niger girls in the state. I'm a Niger girl. And I know a lot of Nigerian girls that are decent. What are you talking about, guy? It depends on the kind of women you guys are hanging around. With. There are lots and lots of decent Nigerian girls. Are you kidding me? Hmm. When I know they go the place and anything they meet. Nigeria, decent girls know they go outside. You're not going to see them for club. You're not going to see them in places that you, you think that you... Decent girls don't have time. They are in the house. They're reading books. Decent girls are reading books. They are minding their business. You know, we'll see them. They do party. They do... All, you know, we we'll see them. They're there inside house. Something, then they bring and come out. Maybe they won't go buy food for market or something. 
This young girl's plenty, oh, my brother. Some women like high value men who they strike an intelligent conversation. What's high value men? I don't understand. Is it high value men? In what way? Are you talking monetary or what? What's a name? What's a high value man? I beg you. What is terms? Only for the break up. High value men. Person and human being. That's the first question. Is the person a human being? Can you do you get along with the person? Do you have similar values? You don't have to have, to have 100% same values, but do you have similar values? Do you have something that, are you guys friendly with each other? Can you strike a conversation and laugh at each other and, you know, don't take yourself too seriously? Is it kind of person that you can have conversations, that both of you can have conversations with each other? Can you tell each other the truth without not losing any respect or love for each other, whatever that is? So I don't understand what high value, high, what high, high value person is. Who's a high value person? Who's a high value person? You know, as long as you can get along with the person and you guys have share similar values to a, 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 a large extent, right? And you, you can laugh at each other and hold each other accountable and communicate with each other and you're not threatened by each other's successes and you can talk about anything and you have peace with that person above all you have peace with that person that's all you need that's all the high value you need what other high value and the person is doing their own thing meaning they have their own job or business that they're doing you have your own thing that you're doing and you're both thriving and you're in each, you're each other's fans you're you know helping each other get to the next goal or whatever. That's all the high value that you need. So I don't know about high value. High value, if you can have a conversation with someone, you can hold the conversation with the person and get along with the person. You're already blessed. And then you have peace because the most important thing is, do you have peace with the person you're talking to? People take that for granted. Do you have peace with the person? Because if you have peace with the person, that's a great cue already. When you don't have peace, you're always having to arrange yourself every time you're around the person. You're faking it till you make it. That's a problem already. So I have a problem with that term, have, have high value, because a lot of people, I don't know what it means. It's a new term that just came up. All these terms, me, I didn't used to hear them before. Whether the person is a better person or not be a better person, that's what you want to know. Not be whether high value. If not money, you, as long as you guys are working and you have some type of income coming in that's what should matter you can can you both take care of your bills can you take care of your bills can you take care of each other you know that's what matters peace is what people should be looking for in relationship oh. yeah, god knows that's what me i'm looking for me i not get all this high value all this my baby grandma oh. hmm. i beg yeah it's a never any story yeah oh you're not bragging you were born here when you were 15. okay where do you live atlantic where are you based oh you never did tell in nigeria i had no one that i talk the way you did they talk you don't talk like nigeria man and yeah man know they talk the way you did they talk i put the one that say huh and yeah man go chase you man go talk to you you know you yourself you know say they talk to you Your dad wants you to, huh? Okay. Where are you based? I mean, they do dating for this channel, though. I mean, they hook people up until politics go enter. I feel still hook people up. I feel this will be organized dating. For, uh, let me see. exactly guy Walele. thank you beyond the intelligent conversation lies the problem I'm telling you oh you wanted to provoke a thought okay you're looking for that decent engineer again you never see <laughs> bless i go okay it depends on the number of people that i mean but i go organize dating show oh no yes now if you help you find one now Tato not correct. I don't know that Tato don't marry. Make I not go put her out there. It affects people at first. Oh, 
Okay. Oh. You are taking already. As I is taking. Okay. You are out of the way. So, age of four and uh, Atlantic. Okay. Send me an email now. You guys should send me an email. Atlantic and age of four. Send me an email. Uh, it's on my screen. I don't know if you can see it. It's on my screen. Okay, let me just make it bigger for you guys. This is for Atlantico and a job for you guys should send me an email. Okay, that's my email address. <clears throat> Your four and um, Atlantic, send me an email there. Oh, I can take it from there. Mm. Yeah, you know, that's the truth. They don't come out, these end girls don't come out, they don't have the time for all the energy for all the drama, so they're usually indoors. You, won't have, you hardly see them, some of them on youtube you know but they're not going to announce themselves guy are you looking guys send me email if you are looking you know i used to do matchmaking you know i even used to have a whatsapp group i used to do zoom meetings and all of that but anyway high value means um means a man with a purpose and vision for the future with character competence hey hey esther they use peter ob word character competence and willingness to work in a partnership for a common goal that is what i mean okay all right since you are booking it down like this that makes sense because that's not too much to ask someone with a purpose and vision for the future right does the vision has to be very clear? Because sometimes people don't, their vision is not very clear, still in the works. As long as they're working towards something, because the vision may not be as clear, but I get what you mean. You need one sharp, sharp. Okay, send me email. You're in New York, and I was in New York, oh, not too long ago, sir. Atlantic. Okay. All right, well, send, you guys send me an email. Um. You have one eye. Okay, now we'll tell the person say you get one eye now. Person will know that other one no matter to them. You know, never know. A high value man knows his role as a man and he has a vision. A high value woman knows her role and her place as a woman. What do you mean, a place, her place as a woman, Atlantic? Because those words are pretty. What do you mean, her place, knows her place? Like, like how? Can you break it down some more? You use role for a man and you use place for a woman. So can you give us further explanation on that? <laughs> Political critique, matchmaker, member. <laughs> oh my God. This is, I used to do this before this Peter Obi came and took over everything. <laughs> you see? Esther, I greet your male manifesto. Let me see. Esther, I greet your male manifesto. It's a good one. And it's part of the fact. In your, yeah, it is. It really is. Person has to have purpose. Though. It's very important because if he doesn't, there's, there's bound to be frustration. They get to a point that the person is frustrated and they start to take it out on you because they don't know what they ought to be doing. And then when they see that you are doing something big, they get they might get jealous, you know, then competition comes in, person starts to resent you, you know, so that's why it's very important for the person to know, you know. AI, 
What are you talking about AI guy or oh, one You are talking about AI K. AI K. I beg go. AI. Oh, please. Let me man this full grant. You don't need AI. You. you don't need AI at all. At all. I know he has, right? Esther, he has raised, yeah. If you're for, I don't know why you did. No, no, you did tell everybody, okay, no, Allah, no. Eh, you will find the person. When you find the person, tell her all this one you did suffer from. Say you blind one eye, you did suffer from periapism, extraordinary libido. <laughs> Uh, you know, <laughs> I know the AI you guy or Walili AI K. I beg go. I'm not, I'm a human being. No, I have flesh and I have blood flowing in my veins. Mm. No woman feel we stand you. Okay, now stay your own now. Stay your own. No. Isaiah, what do you mean? I don't understand. Don't worry for now. I'm a hunter. hunter for we where I think they hunt the hunt. Very soon should be the bushmeat. Who they make me? I don't understand. It will be it won't be all eyes or it will be all eyes. Or, what does that mean, Isaiah? Break it down. What does that mean? Uh -uh. <laughs> I don't understand though, Isaiah. What did this one mean? <laughs> yeah, now they can't even go where I don't know. From politics and uh, African matter, we don't enter love and hey. Oh, oh, Chris means. He has one eye, so vision may not be very <laughs> Oh, that's what he means. Please, now what for you? I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Eh? So, Anani says he means feminine and right at the back of her mind. Why does she have to be at the back of her man? Why does she have to be right at the back of her man, sharing him off while the man stands up and understands guy, Atlantic? You are confusing me. Why she need to be back? I don't understand. Why she go be back? Why she not be by the side of her man? Why back? You be village man. Now village people, now they put their wife for back. <laughs> Eh? Mm. In terms of Abuna, what's Abuna, man? I don't understand this crisis. I beg. Then I can't run. I don't know. Now they carry me go where I don't know. Now they carry me go where I don't know. I beg. Let's call it a night for my own end. I'm not saying I'm mourning for some people end. Eh? Now I run. Nico, all of them, I don't they carry me go where I don't know. For politics, we enter another matter. I don't understand. Here, I beg go. No, no, anything. No. Uh -uh. They ask me question. I don't understand. All the questions people ask me, I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know nothing. Eh? People are just asking me question, asking me question, asking me question. Ah. Anyway, guys, it's been real. So let's keep our eyes on the judiciary as usual. And also, please, keep Nigeria, Africa in your prayers. Please, guys, this is really important. Keep Nigeria in your, keep Africa in your prayers. There's a lot happening around Africa. 
We need peace. Yeah? We've been through so much trauma after trauma after trauma. We never even address them at all. So I beg, Mona pray, Mona we'll pray, and then Mona we'll keep our eyes on the judiciary. Make judiciary hurry up, give us our judgment. Look, we know which one we will do. And I bet Mona put an eye out for this problem when they happen for around Africa because I, I feel say it will progress. Where well, they hear news every day of different different African countries when they don't decide say they want to they do their own thing. You understand? <laughs> I know that is so disrespectful, guy. Miss uh, guy, can you imagine comparing a human being to bushmeat and hunt? I don't understand, Isaiah. That was that was very disrespectful. Though. Yeah. What is that one mean? That comment when you make, you never explain yourself. Finish. Yeah. It will be bushmeat. What's bushmeat? What does that mean? What does that even mean? That's very disrespectful. You, know? you don't talk to people, you put meat in front of people's name. That's wrong now. Eh? That's wrong. You know? Isaiah, please do respect on you. Yeah, I like respect on my platform and love who I beg. They not turn to another thing. We're just having a very playful, candid conversation here. No need for using a, a, a contradictions and putting bushmeat in front of somebody's name. Nobody's bushmeat here. I'm certainly not bushmeat. I am a wonderful, well created human being. So I don't know what you're talking about. So let's show some respect here. I beg. I beg you now. Yeah, Niger, well, they seem to be okay. Everybody is happy in Niger. You know? Yeah, I'm sensitive. Yeah. Mm, I'm sensitive. I didn't like that comment at all. Yeah, yeah it's very disrespectful. You know? You make comments like that. We're making light conversation, and then you just throw that in. Yeah? That's very disrespectful, Mr. Isaiah. Nico, do better. Hmm? We are human beings and we respect each other here. We don't throw insults around, you know. We respect each other. If we're all here for love and to push the society forward, you know. You know. Yeah, it didn't go well at all. But I accept your apology. Yeah, it didn't go well at all. I just kind of felt that was not necessary. But that's okay, forgiving. You're still my brother, regardless. I can't throw you away now. So you still be my brother. I appreciate and I appreciate your support. You're always supporting me. So I, I can't forget that. So, guys, let's end it here on a very good note. We love in our hearts and kindness also. Um, I don't know about tomorrow. The person what plays out tomorrow will determine whether I come out or not. But like I said. Please, let's keep Africa in our prayers. You understand? Let's keep Africa in our prayers. Nigeria, let's keep Nigeria in our prayers as well. And also, let's um, keep our eyes on the judiciary. I just hope that this judiciary make give their judgment. So that we will know what we will do, honestly. We will know where we will face. Because there's just too much going on right now. Everywhere, left, right, center, everything just will happen at the same time. We don't need that, you know? So, and if you're on Twitter, you're on social media platform, please use your hashtags, you know, use your hashtags. Disqualify Tinubu now. Tinubu must go. Go back to Iragliji or Guinea, wherever it came from. You understand? Peter B was the winner. And all eyes on the judiciary. Use those hashtags very effectively, you know, so we can keep the uh, momentum going. But thank you so much, guys, for joining me. I really, really, really appreciate it. Okay? Thank you so much. Tato, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate your support, your consistent support. Thanks for being a member as well. I don't take it for granted. I appreciate you, you know. Um, thank you very much, Tony South. Thank you for being. I know it's morning where you are, right? Yeah, good morning to you. Thank you for staying with me. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Mr. Chris, thank you very much. Atlantic, thank you. Esther, thank you. Isaiah, thank you very much. Everyone, thank you. Have a wonderful night. I'll see you guys on my next one. Bye. Oh, is it 12th of August? Oh, so the judgment will be read on the 12th of August. Okay. That's great. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Have a great rest of the day. Bye.